Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by GEICO. Martin Stadium, Pullman, Washington, the place to be in the Pacific Northwest tonight. The 114th edition of the great college football rivalry known as the Apple Cup. The number 13 Washington Huskies and the Cougars of Washington State trying to win the Apple Cup for the second straight year. The Huskies will not be going to the Pac-12 title game, but they will have a say in who does. If Washington wins tonight, Utah will play USC. If Washington loses, Oregon will go. Got a great quarterback matchup tonight. Michael Penix for Washington, leading the number one passing offense in the country and the air raid of Wazoo led by Cam Ward, the transfer from Incarnate Word. Alongside Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Matthew, Don Davenport down on the sideline tonight for this great matchup on this cold night on the Palouse. Emotions running red hot. The 114th all-time meeting, it goes back to 1900. And Washington has waited a year for payback. Touchback, and Wazoo will start at the 25-yard line. Let's go down to Don. Well, Clay, it's bitter, it's personal, and it means everything. That's how players from both sides describe this rivalry to me this week. Now, Washington has won eight of the last 10 meetings, but it is this scene from their loss last year that's etched in their minds. Washington State planting that flag on the Huskies logo. This video has been played over and over in their facilities this week, guys. Senior Alex Cook joked, it's in 4K in the weight room. He told me it hurts. He still feels for those seniors, guys. They're looking to avenge it tonight. And that quarterback, Jaden Delora, transferred to Arizona. He's not even at Washington State anymore. And Cam Ward goes right to the air on first down. It's incomplete, intended for Dijon Stribling. What do you expect here early, Rocky? Well, I, I think, you know, weather's a little bit of a factor, right? It's pretty cold out here. So I think a, a team that can establish a run is going to do themselves some favors. But, I mean, let's face it, Cameron Ward leads this high-powered air raid offense. They love to spread the field around and chuck that ball all over the place. And two record-setting years at FCS Incarnate Ward. Threw for a ton of yards. He's also very good on his feet. He'll slide down for first down. So Cameron Ward and the Cougars will move the sticks. And this isn't your daddy's air raid offense. You know, a lot of quarterback runs. Cameron Ward does a great job scrambling, keeping plays alive. Going with some tempo. Almost making a one-handed catch there is Robert Farrell. Farrell was uh, Cam Ward's number two pass catcher at Incarnate Word. There's Jake Dickert. First full season, just 39 years old, became the interim head coach last year in week eight and got the job full time on the heels of winning this rivalry game last year. Yeah, he said for this year's game, we got to go take it. We got to go earn it on the field here tonight. Nakia Watson in the backfield and he's going to get the tote. Big hole up the middle. Spun around but stays on his feet. Could be a face mask. Watson goes into plus territory. Rips off 20 and a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty to be had at the end of the play. Automatic first down. Again, this is another unique part of this air raid offense. They like to run the ball. Nakia Watson, a big running back, six foot, 223. It's tough between the tackles, and again, I, I think he can be the X factor in this game tonight. And penalty on Alex Cook, the sixth year senior, the top tackler for Washington. Maybe the MVP of that defense, but an early mistake for him. And now a penalty on Full Wazoo. Start. Full start. High guard penalty. First down. Kalen DeBoer, first year head coach for Washington, 48 years old, hired a year ago almost to the day. He's done so well, he's already got a two year contract extension. Ward extending the play, but then slips down at about the 37 yard line. Jeremiah Martin was in pursuit. And Kalen DeBoer talked about that. This was going to be something. Washington had to account for, and that is Cameron Ward running around extending. Now he kind of extended maybe a little too long right there, and 
slid to the ground, but that's a, he's a dangerous quarterback back there when he's running. Second down and 17. After a penalty and a loss on that last play. Ward looking left, steps up in the pocket, rifles one downfield, and it's out of the reach of the intended receiver. So it'll be third down and long as he was trying to get it to Stribling. And that's one, if you want to win this game against this Washington, number 13 ranked Washington team, you got to hit those. That's one thing this Washington State offense has missed. It's the explosive plays. They're kind of a dink and dunk and move the ball down the field, but they want to win this game here tonight. they got to get those explosive plays. Cam Ward has started tonight 0 for 3. Watson in the backfield, three receivers to the left side. He's looking that way. Ward pushed out of the pocket, comes out short to Watson, and that's going to be well short. The first down yardage needed, so it's fourth down here, and we'll see what Jake Dicker decides to do. And a good pass might have been able to pick up some more yards if you hit Watson in stride here. Now they're going to walk out Dean Janikowski, the field goal kicker. Janikowski, 9 for 12 on the year, has a career-long 42 this season against Utah. This one would best it by 8 yards, a 50-yard attempt for Janikowski. Off the <laughs> goal post, and he got it. Off the crossbar, Janikowski able to muscle it through. And Wazoo was on the board first. What a way to start this rivalry game. Looked like it was going to be a, a fruitless drive for Washington State, but they're able to get three after that ball just doinks off the upright and goes in. Well, that's a confidence booster right there because they get the great run by Watson, helped out by the penalty, the face mask, and then couldn't really come up with much, but he's come out of that thing at least get three. You see Jake Dickert is fired up. You know, we were talking with the kickers down on the field before the game, Rocky, and they said, yeah, the ball's not traveling well tonight. No, it doesn't. That cold air just kind of helps keep that ball tight, right? Doesn't really bounce off that foot, and that's a tough kick here for 50 yards here in this cold weather. Washington State has started fast the last three weeks. They got up 21-0 at Stanford, 28-0 against Arizona State, and 14-0 at Arizona last week. Able to finish off those games, but even Jake Dickert said they didn't keep their foot on the gas. Pretty good start here tonight. And we'll see what plays out. Colton Feeker. And this one is going to be called as a fair catch by Giles Jackson. And we're going to see the Washington explosive offense led by Michael Penix for the first time here tonight. Lefty transfer from Indiana, the nation's leading passer for the nation's number one pass offense. And, and what this has done for Michael Penix's career coming to Washington cannot be understated. He comes in, and this offense is just spreading the ball all over the field and lighting defenses up. Like you said, that lefty, he's got a cannon attached to that left shoulder. He likes to use it. Wayne Talapapa in the backfield with him. But Penix wants to throw on first down, and he wants to take a shot looking for Polk. It's tipped up in the air and knocked away. Shaw Smith, Wade, the cornerback, the best cover guy in the secondary, frustrated that play. Yeah, that's a great play by Smith Wade back there. He's one of the top cover guys, according to PFF. Tracks that ball in the air. He's in phase so he can look back for it. That's a great job. You can see Washington want to take the top off that defense to start this game. Smith Wade said, not on my watch. McMillan goes in motion. On second down, they'll run it. 
spinning is Talapapa. He'll get across the 30-yard line to the 31. Mujahid makes the tackle after that six-yard pickup. And you will see some run game. I think this run game is just dangerous enough to keep that RPO game such a threat with this offense and Michael Penix. Nice crowd in full throat. It's been sold out for two weeks. It's all anybody in the state of Washington has been able to talk about for several days. Interested to see what kind of pressure this Washington State defense brings. The Huskies forced to call a timeout. Kalen DeBoer and the Washington offense disarray. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Pac-12 after dark, the Apple Cup from Pullman. Caleb DeBoer ready to make his mark on this rivalry. Nine wins, more than any first-year coach in Washington history. The Huskies offense has been the story, Rocky Boyman, but he had to burn a time out there. Yeah, the last couple of plays, they brought that play clock down to about two seconds. You can tell this crowd is affecting this offense. Out of the timeout, third down and three. Talapapa comes in motion, sets up in the backfield. Here's Penix rolling out. Throws a strike that is caught by McMillan for a first down, and he'll step out at the 40. And that's a way to quiet this crowd down. Michael Penix does what he's done so many times this year, and, and he is deadly when he gets outside the pocket, and he's on the run here. Student body left, everyone's blocking, and then you find a way to get one of your best wide receivers, Jalen McMillan, open first down near the chains. Offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb has had a terrific year as the play caller for Washington. Coming off a season high, 54 points last week against Colorado. They've got so many weapons. Here's Penix on first down, and again it's McMillan. Jalen McMillan, the third-year sophomore, he might be the best slot receiver in the Pac-12. Absolutely, and he's been on fire the last couple weeks. So good with a run after the catch. It was huge in the Oregon game. Eight for 98 yards in that touchdown. Had that catch where he ripped the ball away from the defender. This offense is humming right now. Back to back first downs through the air. Now they'll go to the ground. And it's Tyler Papa. And he'll pick up two before he's thrown down. Jalen McMillan and Roma Dunze, who is. Yet to be involved in the offense tonight. They have combined for 130 catches and 13 touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, you got Michael Penix back there with five years of experience. He's seen every blitz, he's seen every coverage. And then you got two of the best wide receivers in the Pac 12 to throw to. That's a dangerous combination. I would like to see Washington get Roma Dunze involved in this game. He's been pretty quiet the last two weeks. Cameron Davis, the big physical running back, checks in for Talapapa. He wears number 22. Second down and eight. That's caught by the tight end, Jack Westover. And that's another first down for the Huskies. This offense is starting to find some traction now through the air. And what do you notice about this offense? They use every blade of grass, right? Really utilize the outside parts of the field, and they can do that because, again, the experience of Michael Penix, but also the arm strength he has. He can throw that ball to the sideline, and it's a high percentage pass every time. Taj Davis will wind up wide to the right side of the formation. And he's looking for him, and Davis is going to be about five yards behind that pass from Penix. Smith Wade in coverage that time, second down. Washington State brought some pressure right there. Still is a good pocket. We've got to talk about this Washington State defense. 74 tackles for loss, 29 sacks. That 29 sacks is third best in the Pac-12. They are really good at generating those havoc plays. Jake Dickert was the defensive coordinator the last two years before he hired Brian Ward this past offseason. And he's done a great job with this defensive unit. Crowd is loud. And they may have to burn another timeout. 
That play clock was winding down, and Kalen, Kalen DeBoer has to use timeout. a second timeout second the here in the opening minutes. Well, Washington's on the march, but they've got to get this play clock thing figured out. ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you can save. And in part by Burger King. 13 seniors honored here tonight in Pullman, including that guy, number one, Dan Henley, as we take a look at tonight's player spotlight. Brought to us by Royal Caribbean. What a year it's been for that linebacker. Fantastic. 103 tackles. He's a Butkus finalist. One of just five in the nation. You see the tackles for loss. He is really a huge part of this blitzing, attacking Washington State defense. He's a great one. These Huskies battling Washington State and battling this crowd. No doubt about it. It really has affected this offense and their timing. They can't get the thing started. They've had to burn two timeouts here in the first quarter. We're not even six minutes in. Penix sliding, throwing deep, and nobody home. Jack West over the tight end was the closest man. And so now third down and ten. And Penix has had some decent pockets here tonight. Here they go. They're trying to catch Washington State asleep here. Ninth play of the drive. And again, Penix checking at the line. I don't see Roma Dunze in right now. Penix, penalty flag down. Michael will try to pick it up on his feet, and he's going to be angled out by Smith Wade short of the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Well, let's see what the flag's about. Holding. Offense number 22. 10-yard penalty. Repeat third down. So now third down and 20 for Washington. And now you see Roma, Roma Dunze coming to the game. He's at the bottom of your screen there. Number one wide receiver in the Pac-12. See if they get him the ball, get him involved. They need the 25-yard line to keep this drive going. They have scored on the opening drive in 10 of 11 games this year. Need a big play. Penix down the field looking for McMillan. Well covered. It's incomplete. And I tell you what, we mentioned the weather, but you got to wonder if it's affecting these quarterbacks. Neither one of them have been accurate at all so far in this game. I mean, this is uncharacteristic of Michael Penix. He's usually right on the money with his passes. So Washington is going to bring out Jack McAllister. Red shirt freshman punter from Edmonds, Washington. And he has been hardly used this year. This is going to be just the 22nd punt for the Huskies this year. Robert Farrell back to return. Standing at the 10-yard line. And he's going to drop this inside the 5, and the Huskies are going to pin Wazoo at the 2-yard line with 8-11 to go here in the opening quarter. All right, let's go to the studio and check in with Matt Berry. Guys, good evening. Happy Pac-12 After Dark. About your Capital One rewarding performance. War on I-4 came down to the final 30 seconds. Mikey Keene to Alec Holler. What a grab. UCF survives. They went out playing the American Conference Championship against Tulane. It's been a great day of college football. An interesting day, and... We're wrapping it up here tonight in Pullman. Yeah, wrapping this thing up in style. Great rivalry game. Crowds into this thing. Let's see if Cam Ward can get this offense going. Out of the end zone, Nakia Watson will get it ahead close to the five-yard line. This is the 114th Apple Cup. And there are Pac-12 title game implications here tonight. Can they run it with Watson 
Scored a couple of touchdowns last week at Arizona. Hasn't been 100% lately, Rocky, but he's been gutting it out. Yeah, he really has. Interesting to see what his health level is, because, I, again, I think he is one of the key factors of this game. If they can run the ball, he's gotten stronger, you could argue, as this season has gone on. They need him to be at his strongest tonight. Second year at Washington State, transfer from Wisconsin. Third down and six. Cam Ward has completed just one pass so far for four yards. Getting some pressure uh -oh. in the end zone. Getting chased. He's in trouble. Ward slings it. Incomplete. Cam Bright was thinking safety. Wasn't able to catch up to Ward, but it's going to be fourth down. That was almost a nightmare scenario right there, but Washington decided to bring some pressure, brought the two linebackers, wrapped them around, and he was somehow still able to escape and get outside the pocket, but it forced the a bad throw. You talked about it all week, Rocky. This O-line for Washington State's going to be tested tonight. It really is, and that's been their issue all year. They have given up 34 sacks this year. They're banged up, not a lot of depth. they got to be able to hold up better tonight if they want to win. Nick Haberer, the Australian, will punt it. And Jalen McMillan calls for the fair catch inside the 45-yard line. So Washington the down three here in the first quarter, but they've got great field position when we come back. A 50-yard Dean Janikowski field goal that barely went over the crossbar, the difference in this game. Pac-12 title implications for the Apple Cup this year. A Washington win. Utah will face USC next week in the conference title game. A Washington State win, Oregon goes to play USC. How about that collapse by Oregon today, right? In the fourth quarter, they're ahead by three scores, and Oregon State came back and just kept running the ball and won that thing. What a fantastic game. The Ducks completed six passes in that game. What a run by Cameron Davis. He's been doing that all year, Rocky. He gets 14 on first down. You know, we've talked about this is a passing offense, and of course, yeah, number one in the nation in pass yards. But these two running backs, right, Tuala Papa and Cameron Davis, have combined 22 touchdowns, right? So they can run the ball a little bit, especially when they have to. I don't think this whole line gets talked about enough. They have stayed healthy this year. And they've been outstanding. Same starting five for the ninth straight game for the Huskies. First down and 10. Penix looking to the air, and he's looking deep again. Some contact in the secondary. No penalty flag. Is intended for Taj Davis. But Shaw Smith Wade has been very good so far in this game. He's right there, step for step. Penix just a little bit off tonight. You know, I, I mean, he's had decent pockets, just hasn't really been able to connect. I'd like to just see him get some easier throws, get into a rhythm, get two or three, four completions in a row going. And Cameron Ward, he's just absolutely running for his life right now. Davis in the backfield. McMillan goes in motion. Second and 10. McMillan the catch. Quickly wrapped up and thrust back. He'll get four. Maui Noa, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Yeah, you got a quarterback in Penix who's closing in on 4,000 yards this year. Cam Ward, albeit at the FCS level, threw for over 4,600 last year. It's been a slow start for both tonight. A lot of checking at the line of scrimmage for Washington. I used to seeing them with a lot of shifts and motions and things like that. I haven't really seen that. I think you're just trying to figure out this Washington State defense right now. The Huskies best in the nation on third down. Caught by Polk. What a catch. To the end zone. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown. Jalen Polk. And Washington goes in front. And what a grab by Polk. Because this ball got away a little bit. For Michael Penix, a little bit high. But Jalen Polk just snatched it out of the night sky and brought it in. And then look, you got to worry about Roma Dunze. You got to worry about Jalen McMillan. Well, then here comes Jalen Polk. Fantastic wide receiver. He's made a bunch of tough catches this year. 
At the 76-yard touchdown against Oregon, he comes up big right there. And Peyton Henry comes on to tack on the extra point to make it 7-3. to three. Now Michael Penix. In his first touchdown pass of the night, he's 27th of the year. And Jalen Polk, the Texas Tech transfer, second year at Washington, made it look very easy, even though it wasn't. He really did. Sometimes as a quarterback, early on, you're kind of out of rhythm. Things are. You need a wide receiver to just flat make a play and get you going a little bit, and that's what Polk just did. And Michael Penix, it's just amazing you watch him on film how many times as a left-handed quarterback they roll him out to his right, but he's able to just get that body, those hips turned back around and deliver a good throw. And finally, this Washington offense looking like it has all season. Well, guys, Michael Penix actually talked about Jalen Polk a lot this week. When I talked to him, he said the work ethic he gets from him unmatched. He said he takes practice film, critiques himself after every single practice, and then we'll talk to Michael about it. He wants to be great. We saw that just there. Well, and Don, I love the story that Kalen DeBoer talked about with Michael Penix. When he came on his visit here, he <laughs> scrutinized these wide receivers. He watched all their old tape. It was a business trip. He wanted to know that the school he was going to go to had elite wide receivers. And after watching tape, he found out they did. This rivalry goes back to 1900. And Kalen DeBoer, he's getting a piece of it this year for the first time. Historically, Washington has dominated the series, but the Cougars are trying to win back-to-back -back games for the first time in 14 years. Last year, it ended a little testy with that flag playing <laughs> yeah. in Seattle. We'll see what happens here tonight. And you can sense this rivalry just being around town as we have the last couple days. Lots of Husky fans, Washington State fans. They want to get this thing. There's Nakia Watson out of the backfield on first down. And he's going to be knocked down at the 34. Watson a pretty good pass catcher out of the backfield. Jackson made the stop. Didn't get much there, but I like the fact get get Cam Ward an easy throw. You got to get him comfortable because right now he is not. And a lot of that credit goes to this Washington defensive front. Hit is Watson trying to get to the second level. Maybe picks yeah, up two really yards. Tupola for two. He made the stop. Yeah, this is the number four scoring defense in the Pac-12. Allowing 26 points per game. It's a salty group. And it really has improved as the year has gone on. They gave up 85 points in their two losses to UCLA and Arizona State in back to back weeks. But I, last week, they held Colorado to seven for the entire game. Absolutely. It's been their secondaries and really banged up, right? Devin Banks, good cornerback, went out for the year. Julius Irvin out for the year. But they've done good lately. Good open field tackle there by Powell. And this could be about a yard short of the line to gain for Leighton Smithson. So fourth down and one. And this is a tricky spot in the field. And Jake Dickard is going to send the punt unit out. This is the right call. There's one thing about being aggressive. Another is being foolish. And I, I think this is the right way to go about it here. Punt this ball away. We saw Dan Lanning make a unique decision in the fourth quarter of the game with Oregon State today for Oregon. Now it's a fake punt. Man wide open. Deion Henley, the linebacker from the punter, Nick Haverer, <laughs> and it's a 36-yard pickup. What did Jake Digger tell us yesterday when we talked to him? He said special teams is going to play huge in this. And right now, West Washington State is winning that battle. They have the field goal that doinked in. And then look at this picture perfect fake punt to the Buckus finalist, Dayon Henley. What a great shot right here. And, and again, lots of shift in motion, moving them around. And then before you look around to see where you're lined up, you see the linebacker coming out and catching a pass. Not the Ozzy. Right on the screws. And now here's Cam Ward. Pressured, throws to the sideline out of bounds. Wow, and, and there is just nowhere to go for the, with the ball right now for Cam Ward. This secondary for Washington State is really playing well right now. 
So here's Washington State on the plus side of the field. Last time they had to settle for three points. You said it before, they can't be settling for field goals tonight. They got to cap drives with touchdowns. Touchdowns and again, explosive plays. They got to get a big play here. You, know, you, you get the momentum and the energy off of a, a fake punt like that, got to capitalize. Cam Ward, three for eight. Just 11 yards passing tonight. Still trying to get on track. Offensive line doing a good job giving him time. Cam Ward still looking downfield. Thinks about running. Time runs out. Braylon Trice takes him down. He is the Huskies' leader in sacks, and he gets another one. And this is what you call a coverage sack. Again, Washington's secondary locking him up downfield. There's nowhere to go the ball. It's just a three-man rush, so he has time. And then coming out of your screen, into your screen, is Braylon Trice. Coach talked about his closing speed, and we saw it right there. A loss of five on the play. Spotted back at the 35-yard line. Watson comes back in at running back. Ward looking to throw here, third and 15, need a big play. And that is Ollie, but he's going to be a couple of yards short. Donovan Ollie hauls it in, shoved out of bounds by Perryman, short of the line to game. So it's fourth down. I think they're going to go for it here. Washington, Washington State has the fewest fourth down conversions in the Pac-12. They're 8 of 10 this year. So Washington State sub, so now they're going to allow Washington's defense to sub, and they're going to take their time to make sure they get lined up properly. Play clock at three. Ward. Little receiver screen, and they got it. First down. They needed two. They pick up four with Stribling. And that's two plays in a row. Finally, Cameron Ward looks like he's in the rhythm. And we've seen a lot this year, especially these last four games. And it's actually Leighton Smithson, number 89. And they needed that play. First and ten. Play fake to Watson. Ward getting chased again. And he's tripped up as he comes inside the 15-yard line. Trice got him again. Look at this tempo here going quick. Ward, quick strike to the tight end, incomplete. He wanted Billy Revere, but Asa Turner was right there. And Asa Turner gave him a shot. Billy Revere has been an integral part of this offense. They try to catch Washington's defense slipping. Watch Asa Turner, watch the ground he covers. Ball's a little bit high, expose that rib cage. Just out of the reach of Revere. Lisa Turner having an excellent junior year at free safety. Closing speed by Turner, that was great. The Cougs are 0 for 4 on third down so far tonight. Trying to convert, Ward in trouble again. Steps out of the pocket, he's running, he's got the touchdown. What a play by Cam Ward. I mean, you almost hate to say this, but I, I see a little Mike Vick in his game, right? Just in the ability to sense things around him, sense the danger, the rush, and the ability to just pull that thing down and scramble for yards. It's really just a unique piece of this air raid offense. Usually not just throwing the ball around the place, but you get a running, scrambling quarterback like Ward. This adds another element that defense has to worry about. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year for Ward. Capping an 11-play, 75-yard drive. And, and that was important for him, right, to get some confidence going in this game. He had two big throws. One was the fourth down throw that they convert, and then a scramble for a touchdown. I think Cam Ward is into the flow of this game now.
Janikowski's extra point is good. And it's 10 to 7 with under a minute to go in the opening quarter. Washington State goes back in front here in Pullman. Cam Ward may be running for his life, but, but he's also running for a touchdown. I mean, look, there's nowhere to go. The ball defense collapsing all around him. It just has the presence of mind and the sense to find that end zone and punch it in. Uh, here's our Week 12 Monday Night Football AFC matchup. T.J. Watt, the Steelers, taking on Jeff Saturday's Colts at Lucas Oil Stadium. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. Monday Night Countdown kicks it off at 6 Eastern. Great start. This 114th edition of the Apple Cup. Clay Matvick, Rocky Boyman, Don Davenport here in Pullman. We hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. And Jake Dickert told his team, don't defend the Apple Cup, retake it. Take a more it. assertive way of saying <laughs> that. And uh, he was all over that this week. That's right. He's saying we're not protecting anything. We, we, we got to go grab that trophy, go grab this game. And, and he's just we really enjoyed talking with him. And, and you know, you just feel the energy he's brought to this Washington State program. And they're playing really good right now. Colton Feeker again is not going to reach the end zone with this kick. Jackson is going to be punched in the mouth at the 20. Great coverage by the Cougs. Just a 10-yard return. Let's go back to the studio and Matt. All right, guys, we got your AT&T countdown to the CFP National Championship Studio update, and it's all about Caleb Williams, who put on a show tonight against Notre Dame County for four touchdowns. Playoff hopes alive and well in L.A., 38-27 the final. Well, I'll tell you what, with Caleb Williams' performance in that game, and then you compare to what C.J. Stroud did, did not play well in that game against Michigan, you got to figure Caleb Williams really in the top running for that Heisman Trophy right now. Penix to the outside, long throw, gets it to Adunze, his first reception tonight. He's gonna pick up nine. Yeah, I just think it's so important to get Roma Adunze involved. Again, the last couple weeks hasn't really gotten into that flow, but it's a great catch there. It's, it's good wide receivers always like to get those early catches in and get some momentum and feed off of that. Now they're going to feed Davis in this Washington run game. And it's going to be third down and short. The Washington run game, not the focus, obviously, but it, it's been steady with Talapapa and Davis. Yeah, again, just good enough, right, to, to stay somewhat balanced here. This is certainly a pass led That's offense. The end of the first quarter. Michael Penix still trying to figure this defense out a little bit. What a great third 15 minutes in Pullman, Washington for the Apple Cup. One off the crossbar. A couple of nice scoring drives for either team, and it's 10-7 Cougs after one. Welcome back to Pullman, Martin Stadium. ESPN College Football presented by Geico. What a great environment for the Apple Cup. You think these kids care that it's 30 degrees? Yeah, 30 degrees feels like 25 out there. Shirts off. They love this Apple Cup rivalry. They're into it. 7.30 local time start. They've had all day to get ready for this, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. Cameron Davis in the backfield on third and one for Washington. Down three. And he's got it. First down. Armani Archie makes the tackle, but they'll move the sticks. Good job by that offensive line, just getting a little bit of push. For Cam Davis to be able to pick up that yard for the first down. Kalen DeBoer has been pretty humble about uh, his quick success in Seattle. He said there was a, a lot of talent at Washington. Just needed to push it in the right direction. He has done that. Yeah, he's really just re-energized this program, coming off that 4-8 and eight season last year, but Michael Penix has a lot to do with that as well, how he's performed. Two receivers to either side, Davis in the backfield, play fake, Penix try to get it out to the safety valve, Davis, it lands incomplete at his feet. 
And what did Brian Ward, Washington State's defensive coordinator, tell us? He said, look, we cannot allow Michael Penix to just sit back there and play seven on seven. And he's really been able to do that most of, most of the night until that play right there. Washington State able to force a quick throw. Christian Mejia applying some pressure. Single high safety, Penix going deep down the sideline looking for Polk, who had the touchdown back in the first quarter. They can't connect this time. Jaden Hicks, the strong safety, in on the coverage. And Mike Penix ah, just missed him. A little wheeler out there, trying to get Polk going down the sideline. Here we go, third down, Washington State's defense showing some pressure. See some linebackers. Henley, Travion Brown, right up on that line of scrimmage in those A-gaps. Polk in single coverage here to the near side. And now, now the quarterback is hit and he goes and shoving. I think we're going to get a delay of game call. That motion's been, running high again. It's been consistent tonight. Still. Not able to get the playoff. You know, the communication, a lot of it again has to do with this crowd and the noise level they're generating, but it's really affected Michael Penix in this offense. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. I mean, they've had to burn a couple of timeouts. Now you get a delay a game. And after the rest of the series, just a little bit of a late hit there. As Lawrence Falatea, the defensive end, nudging Penix. Third penalty against the Huskies. As this crowd has been relentless, especially since that field goal barely crossed the crossbar. That, that got him going early. It really ignited this group. Third and 15. Here comes the pressure. Penix unloads. Man open. Wow. Caught by Giles Jackson. That is a long throw, and Penix drilled it right into the shoulder pads of Jackson. That is an NFL caliber throw by Penix right there. They bring just four, they drop the linebackers out, but watch this throw. Deep and over the top of the corner, underneath the safety in a very, very tight window. Michael Penix showing why he's the nation's number one quarterback in pass yards. That was the biggest timeout. play of the night for Washington. Washington. Now Wazoo wants a timeout. Time Michael Penix showing off that left arm. Michael Penix only 36 yards away from becoming the second quarterback in Washington history with 4,000 yards passing in a season. Cody Pickett did it. 2009 went over 4,400 yards that year. The prettiest pass, though, that he's had tonight, that 25-yarder to Jackson just before the timeout. R really, the, the biggest thing that Washington's dealing with right now is just getting the snap off. A lot of late substitutions I'm seeing from the sideline back into the game. So first and 10 across the midfield line. Penix from a clean pocket. Thrown deep again, has a man wide open. It's a Dunze. Easy touchdown for the Huskies. 47 yards. Well, that's a way to get Roma Dunze back involved with an absolute dime down the sideline. But Clay, this was all made possible by the offensive line. Watch the pressure. It's picked up. Michael Penix not rushed, and then Roma Dunze showing off his speed down the sideline. And showing off that hair underneath the helmet. Jake Dicker, Washington State's head coach, when we asked him about what makes this Washington offense so great, first thing he mentioned was this offensive line, how good they were in the amount of time they provide 
Michael Penix. Let's watch this release, a little stutter and go, and the DB right there, Derek Langford knew what time it was as soon as he saw the stutter and go. Roma Dunze, such a special talent with his speed. And that throw right there puts him over 4,000, I believe, right, partner? Yes, it does. And how about that hair for wow. Dunze? I, I thought you had great wild hair. <laughs> yeah, it does it. Doesn't hold a candle to that mop that <laughs> Dunze has. Michael Penix, over 300 yards passing in 9 of 11 games this year. He threw for over 400 at Oregon a couple of weeks ago. Set a school record with 516 against Arizona in October. Yeah, first quarter, it was a little slow going at first on this cold night, but, boy, he's starting to really come around now. And, and that's a sign of a good quarterback. Look, everything's not going to be perfect, right? You're coming to a loud environment, lots of energy in this stadium. You got a defense in Washington State that does a great job disguising things. Okay, it's going to take a little while, but credit Michael Penix for being poised and then figuring that thing out a little bit. And his last couple throws have been fantastic. A short kick is from Brady Gross. Coming up is Lincoln Victor to field it. Ooh, and he's going to take a pounding at the 30 yard line. Well, the kick coverage has been quick and hard hitting so far tonight. All right. Who's ruling the moment? Brought to us by Burger King and the fake punt by Nick Haberer. He finds the linebacker, Henley, to keep the drive alive. And, and you got to think that a you know, special teams play like that, they're going to have to do if they want to stay in this game. And that really helped them because it provided a new set of downs for Cam Ward to be able to run that thing back. And, and now it's up to Cam Ward to see if they can respond. Ward won the Jerry Rice Award last year. Most outstanding freshman in the FCS. Now big time quarterback in the Pac-12. Hands off to Jalen Jenkins, the number two running back for the Cougs. Maybe gets a yard. Yeah, not much success on the ground tonight. At least from the running back position. Cam Ward has had some success running around scrambling, but the, the handoffs to Nakia Watson haven't done well tonight so far. Really spreading the field out here. He likes to get a spread out and do a count of that box here and figure out where to go with the ball. A full start in Washington State, I think. Ball start. Offense north 79. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. When we talked to Jake Dickert this week, he said penalties. We absolutely cannot commit. Penalties no. uh, if we're gonna have a chance to win this game and they've been pretty good throughout the year They kept their penalties down, but that's their second false start Yeah, these rivalry games always come down to things like that right special teams play penalties that's Something Jake Dickert again with this offense not being a high-powered explosive offense can ill afford Play action Ward down the seam has a man it's caught Donovan Allen across the 50 into Washington territory. A gain of 26. There you go. That's what this offense needed. Explosive play. We've been talking about it. We've been asking for it. And finally, they get a little drag route across the middle of the field. And now going with tempo, trying to get the ball to Jenkins out of the backfield. He juggles it, and it lands incomplete. That's one thing Washington State likes to do. They get an explosive play, like to get right up to the line, try to snap that thing before the defense can get resettled. Didn't work out there, though. Eric Morris, the offensive coordinator, said they would be going in and out of tempo throughout the night. We've seen him go fast a few times here in the first half. I just feel like this offense, you, you really do such a good job of spreading the defense out and creating a light box. Haven't really... Seen him able to do that much tonight. Again to the flat. Orion Peters, the catch. He's got the first down and more. Does a great job tiptoeing the sideline to get the first. And he's pushed out by Perriman after a gain of 14. And that thing happened quick. Ball was snapped. It was caught and then shot out like a rocket to the perimeter. Got that thing to Peters. And he made a play. 
Cougars have had the lead twice tonight on the march again. Again over the middle. Peters is behind him. Lands incomplete. <clears throat> that was going to be a great catch if he was able to make it. Yeah, that's a ball that's behind Peters, and that thing's got to be on the money. That's an easy throw right over the middle of the field, right in front of the quarterback. He's got to complete that. Ward is going to send his big receiver, Stribling and Smithson, to the wide side of the field. Stribbling is huge. 6'4", 204 pounds. Second and 10. Ward going deep, looking for Stribling. In the corner, and it's incomplete. Dominique Hampton doing a great job in pass coverage. Fantastic coverage by Hampton. Stribling gets a little bit of a step on him, but he doesn't look back until he regains phase. Then once he gets back in phase with the wide receiver, turns his head around, bats that ball away. That is textbook play by a cornerback right there in Hampton. How about his look into the camera and saying, yeah, no sweat. No sweat. Well, that's a different breed, man. Those cornerbacks, that's a tough, tough job in today's college football, the way these quarterbacks are slinging the ball around the park. Third down and 10, Ward on the run, has a man, can hit Robert Farrell. Mm. And he was right there for the taken. And that's about the third throw tonight where they've had a wide open wide receiver and a potential big play, and Ward's just missing. Rolls out to his right, and look, the, the, he's gonna, that goes in the end zone for a touchdown. Robert Farrell knew it. He said, put that ball in the money, and I'll take it in. Cam Ward has got to be better, got to be more accurate if they want to win this game. They converted twice on fourth down, but once was the fake punt. They need the 24-yard line. Ward, under pressure, hit, escapes. Throws, caught, Farrell. Cuts to the end zone, touchdown! What a play by Cam Ward! He's Houdini back there! I mean, he is absolutely dead to rights in the backfield. Good stunt, good twist game up front by Washington's defense, and he's still, he's able to come out of it and find Farrell, watch this. They loop a defensive tackle around, breaks a couple tackles, gets away, and then still with the presence of mind to find Farrell down the field. Again, I, I talked about a little Mike Vick to his game. That's what Vick used to always do so well, just shake off defenders, feel the pressure around him where it was, escape out, and able to make a great throw. And Wazoo goes back in front. Time out on the field. Cameron Ward missed Farrell on that wide open pass makes up for it with the touchdown throw but for a quarterback it's all about how do you respond and cam ward responds with a fantastic scramble pulling the rabbit out of the hat and fighting robert farrell and now this washington state team back in this thing cam ward with his 22nd touchdown pass of the year we got our fourth lead change here in the Apple Cup. There have been some great moments in this rivalry over the years. Let's go back 25 years to 1997. Husky Stadium, Ryan Leaf throwing for 358 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Guess we're not going to run this. We're going to run it later. We're going to be a flashing back later. There's Eric Morris, offensive coordinator for Washington State. Played under Mike Leach as a wide receiver at Texas Tech. That's where he first learned the air raid. Coached under him here at Wazoo in 2012. Comes back as offensive coordinator from Incarnate Word, where he was the head coach. Brought Cam Ward with him. How has that worked out? <laughs> it's worked out pretty well. But, but I just love the, the, the little twist, the little nuances of this air raid attack that he's put onto it. And again, the big part of that is Cam Ward and 
really just his ability to extend the play. That's what we've seen tonight. He scrambles around, he feels pressure, but he's not looking to just take off. He's extending that thing, just allowing some time for the wide receivers to get open, and it's been deadly in this attack. Now it's Michael Penix's turn. And his number one offense, not just in the Pac-12, the entire nation, See what they can do as a response down three with 11.05 to go in the half. Well, we, we promised some great quarterback play in this game, and we're seeing it from both sides so far. Let's see what Michael Penix's answer is. Wayne Talapapa in the backfield. The tight end Devin Colt will shift to the left side of the formation on first down. Play action. Penix again looking to throw deep. Looking for a Dunze again, and nearly hooked up another time. Langford in on the coverage. It's good coverage down the field by Langford. This is tough duty. We got one of the best wide receivers in the Pac-12 streaking down the field and able to maintain tight coverage. That was good. Langford, a senior, honored tonight. He had a pick six last week at Arizona. Second and ten. And go to the ground game. Big hole up the middle for Talapapa. Wayne Talapapa ran for 107 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week against Colorado. He gets 19 on that play. Wow, and they had Brendan Jackson just in the hole, unblocked. He was not able to make the tackle. A powerful run by Talapapa. The Virginia transfer. It's been really good the last few weeks. We've seen him breaking a lot more tackles these last few weeks. Penix again, plenty of time to throw. Hits McMillan, who is wide open. And he angles out near the 30-yard line. Boy, just impressed with the hands of McMillan and Odunze tonight. Yeah, they've made a couple of nice grabs here, but McMillan just feasts in the middle of the field. Pulling that ball out of the night sky, a little run after the catch. Uh, again, I mean, Michael Penix is phenomenal, but it, it's just the collaboration between the offensive line, providing the time, and then Penix with the throw, and then some great wide receivers are hauling some of those catches. That makes for a big offense. McMillan looking to throw back to Penix. Here goes Michael Penix on the run. Clear lane to the end zone, touchdown. Kalen DeBoer. Trick play here in the first half, and it results in six. And we saw a similar style throwback, reverse, whatever you want to call it, last week. And now Ryan Grubb just adds a little bit of a twist to it, throwing the ball back to Michael Penix. Okay, we're going to throw it out to him. He's going to run. Nope, he's going to throw it back to Michael Penix. He got the Calvary. Look at the offensive line. Rosengarten out there and company. Wow. Timeout on the field. And so now Washington regains the lead, our fifth lead change of the first half. These offenses are prolific, and they're pulling out all the stops tonight. Whatever you got to do to win the Apple Cup, even if you got to throw back to your quarterback, Michael Penix in this offense responds. Well, Washington State had a fake punt. We see some trickeration from Washington here in the first half. And this is going to be ruled a uh, rushing touchdown for Penix as this was a backwards pass from Jalen McMillan. But the third rushing touchdown for Penix. I mean, look at the cavalry, the offensive line out there leading the way, providing the blocks. What a great call. What a great football game. Oh. Wazoo set to get it back. Low line drive kick. This is Lincoln Victor. Across the 30. Good return to about the 36-yard line. This week's college football playoff rankings presented by Capital One. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty now. Georgia easily gets by Georgia Tech today, even though they started slow. And the big win, of course, for Michigan. 45-23 over Ohio State. Iowa State no match for number four TCU.
No. And how about Michigan? Again, 22-point win at Ohio State. What an emphatic win. In my opinion, best win of this college football season. C.J. Stroud was the Heisman favorite. I don't wonder where that sits now. There's a quick mm. strike to the outside. Asa Turner, quick closing speed to wrap up Stribling. That's going to be a loss of three on the play. And that's the key to playing good defense. When you see it, do you believe it? And go hit it, right? Don't hesitate. Trust your eyes. He knows where that ball's coming and doesn't hesitate. Great job closing on the ball by Asa Turner. That Washington secondary really struggled with injuries early in the year, but they have persevered and gotten better steadily. This is going to be a first down. Stribbling again. This time gets 14, and they'll move the chains. That was a great job by Stribbling. Partner, you mentioned earlier the size of Stribbling, 6'3", 204. He broke that tackle by Asa Turner and got the first down. Now they'll run it with Watson. And he's going to be stacked up short on the 45-yard line. How about the loss tonight by LSU? Texas A&M, they didn't have anything to play for. Wow. LSU, number five in the rankings, get beat. And some of those big wins they had against Alabama, and all oh, that's for naught. Leighton Smith's in good run after the catch. Out at the 37. And Cameron Ward doing a good job. Hitting the perimeters of the field here. Key for him is just, can they give him a little bit of time? I just don't think they can expect Cam Ward to run around and scramble and extend all night like that. You know, at some point, that just forces bad throws. I haven't seen it yet, but that guy back there, number one, has been fantastic this season and really, really playing well tonight. Passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown for Ward. From the 37, first down. Ward, plenty of time going deep down the field. Farrell diving. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. Robert Farrell, what a beautiful reception. And we'll see if this thing holds up. They're going to look at it, but it, it, this ball looked like it was overthrown. Like, ah, oh, you overthrew it. But how about the closing speed by Farrell? Let's this see that he is able to. Say that view right there doesn't show me anything that would overturn that. Let's see if this one is. And they're going to take a look at it. Let's see if we can see by this view. Yeah, I think that ball might have hit. That, that's, that's the best view of it right there that we just saw. Oh, what a great effort for Farrell. Oh. But I think you're right. I, I think this is probably coming back. Yeah, so before it looked like that ball was jostling around before he was able to, to haul it in. Already one touchdown catch for Farrell tonight. Remember, he followed Cam Ward and Eric Morris to the Palouse from Incarnate Word. <laughs> they were great teammates. Farrell caught 74 balls from Ward last year. You can see they've got great chemistry. I was going to say, yeah, you think uh, those two have, uh, you know, had some connections in the past? Absolutely. How many reps have those two had with each other practicing games over to now going on three seasons? And that ball, again, looked like it was overthrown by about five or six yards. He was able to close on it. We'll see if it's going to stand or not. Matthew Richards, our lead official tonight, the replay booth is led by Gary McNana. And just remember, it's always the thing, is it's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn this thing. It was called a catch on the field. We'll get a call. After further review, the receiver did not maintain possession of the ball. Results in an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the 37-yard line. <laughs> It was still a great effort, young man. We got to give it to you. But, yeah, I, I, that was the view right there. Looked like that ball right there was just jostling around a little bit. Crowd doesn't like it. Typical air raid receiving core, though. You've got six guys with 20 yep. catches or more on the year coming into this game tonight. 
and Cam Ward has used a bunch of guys, 10 total in this one. And it's important what you say right there, because if you just got one great wide receiver and all the balls go to him, defenses can adjust. They can take your best option when, when you have five or six, they can't. That's Lincoln Victor on that catch. About a yard short of the line to gain, the former Hawaii Rainbow Warrior picks up nine. They're gonna go quick here. Try to get Washington moving around. Watson hit, bounces to the outside. Nakia Watson, first down. And then he's collared at the 15 and drug out by Tuputala. Just a great job by Watson staying with it. And there's a flag. Holding. He ran into a wall here, but he might be coming back for a holding. Yep. That was a third penalty tonight against Washington State, and I think all three have been on the plus side of the field. That's right, yeah, and that was Christian Hilborn, the left tackle, just reaching out and grabbing, I think it was Jeremiah Martin, committing the penalty. So now first and 20, Washington State down four. Check that third down, pardon me. Interesting to see if Washington wants to bring pressure. High snap. Watson is able to grab it. And he's going to be pulled down at the 34-yard line. That was a busted play. And so now fourth down for the Cougs. Yeah, that was an errant snap. It was really snapped right in between Watson and Cam Ward. They're going to go for it. Ward's got time. Wide open receiver caught. Dijon Stribling. First down Washington State. And this is the benefit of tempo, of going fast. They just absolutely cut Stribling use. No, loose. No one is on him. The tempo, your guys are rushing around. Boom, that ball snapped, and you don't have everyone locked down. It makes for an easy throw. How is the top receiver left that wide open on that play? You, you, you can't find him. You're looking around. Where's he at? What's the coverage? What defense are we playing? And before you can figure all that out, you got a wide open wide receiver. Huge conversion on fourth down. Little shovel <laughs> out to Victor. Lincoln Victor churning. It's going to be a gain of five. Hampton will get credit for the tackle. I'll tell you what, these quarterbacks these days, throwing sidearm, throwing with their left hand, shovel passes forward. I mean, everything is in the arsenal for these guys. And Cam Ward, that's what it's all about. Just, just get the ball in the hands of playmakers. You know, things came pretty easy at the FCS level for Cam Ward. He's had to deal with a little bit of adversity this year. He, it's really rounded his character into form. Talk to Jake Dickert. He says, I, I don't trust anybody more than I trust Cam Ward. He's got a receiver open again. It's Watson. Touchdown. Was that the sixth lead change, partner? I mean, this is going just back and forth. And you were talking about Cam Ward and the confidence this coaching staff has in him, and you're seeing why. No hesitation, nowhere to go with the ball. He's got the call, got the coverage he wants, and you get Nakia Watson leaking out of the backfield. No one's on, and the ball comes out of his hand. Bam, just like that for the touchdown. They're not very deep at running back, but the two guys they've got, Watson and Jenkins, are good enough for sure. 24-21 <laughs> Washington State back on top in the Apple Cup. Nikia Watson not very able, able to find much in the run game, but he comes up with a huge play, leaking out of the backfield, and back and forth we go. Washington State goes back on top. 24-21 Washington State back on top with 5.07 to go in the first half. Nikia Watson having a 10-play scoring drive. Taco Bell, Lip Moss student section. Student sections across the country competing to be the Lip Moss student section of the year all season long. Pretty good candidate here tonight. Almost 33,000 fans in attendance. A lot of students on this cold night on the Palouse, but man, they turned out ready <laughs> to get behind the Cougs tonight. I, I love this stadium, love this environment. Everyone's packed in here. A short kick, Colton Feeker. 
At the goal line, Giles Jackson. And he's not going to make the 20-yard line. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Yes, guys, Nakia Watson, you can thank his mom for his ability to catch balls. To Syria, he said he was four or five, playing flag football, got hit in the nose because he couldn't catch a ball and he wanted to quit. Mama said, I do not think so. Took him out to their parking lot of their apartment complex every day through ball after ball to him. So props to mom for his ability to catch the ball. What a lesson. Can't quit, right? And I'll tell you what, the play of that last drive was that errant snap. He was able to come up with it, and they got three or four yards, which set up the fourth down play to Stribling. So, Don, you're right. Those great hands really come into play by Watson on that drive. Michael Penix has all day to throw again. Odunze, what an adjustment! Makes the catch at the 35. Battling Smith Wade, he's a winner again. I love this game. Uh, look at the dunes, I'm just the athleticism going back across, still able to jump up and get two hands on it. I mean, it's good coverage by Washington State there, but Roma Dunes has shown why he's the best in Pac 12. He's already over 100 yards on three catches tonight. That's going to be a catch out to the 31 yard line for Quentin Moore, the tight end. Remember, I talked about how quiet Adunze had been the last couple weeks. I mean, just last week, two catches for 17 yards. But in a big-time rivalry game like this, you need your best player to show up, and he has. It's already the sixth 100-yard receiving game this year for Adunze. Talapapa. Always hard to bring down. It's going to be third and manageable here for the Huskies. Talapapa, just physical at the point of attack. Doing a good job of late of that. He was Virginia's captain last year. Still dealing emotionally with the death of his former teammates. He'll stay in here on third down and short. They give it to him. Lowers his shoulder pads, and it looks like he got it. It's going to move the sticks here. A great job of just powering through. Sometimes it's not going to be a clean hole. You just got to just drive those legs and pick it up, and he did. How about that? A transfer wearing the C for Washington. I mean, you don't see that very often. Penix also yep. named a captain as a transfer. Speaks to their leadership. Cameron Davis behind Penix in the pistol. Play fake. Man wide open. It's Giles Jackson on the slant. He's got a first down. That's a catch and run of 12 yards. I mean, how about this play? How do you defend this? If you're a defender and you're reading the quarterback and you're using your vision, what do you do with this? Everything is going that way, and he just turns around almost blind and throws a strike to Giles Jackson. Quentin Moore, the tight end, comes in close to the formation. Penix going to the corner of the end zone for McMillan. Too strong, incomplete. Smith Wade, the cornerback, was there. Hey, well, he's done a good job tonight. Smith Wade. That's tough duty covering both Jalen McMillan, Rome Wadunze, Jalen Polk. He's done a nice job. Has this Washington State defense made Penix uncomfortable enough for, for your liking? They, they have not. I, I, it's been a clean pocket where Cam Ward's been running for his life. Michael Penix has had. Pretty clean pocket most of the night. That's why he's made some big throws. They got to find a way to affect him here. Davis in motion out of the backfield. Penix comes over the middle. That is caught inside the five down to the four yard line. That's the tight end, Devin Cole. And there it was again that offensive line. Those white jerseys just building a wall with not just the time but the space. His quarterbacks hate when that pocket gets pushed back in their face. It affects their vision. They start throwing off their back foot, but when they got time and space, a guy like Michael Penns can read it and just shoot that ball wherever he wants. This is the Huskies' first trip into the red zone tonight. They've scored on all but eight trips into the red zone this year. Third down and two, they can pick up a first down at the two. Got a doomsday in the bunch at the bottom of the screen. Penix is going to run. Touchdown. 
just sashays into the end zone. Two rushing touchdowns for Michael Penix. And look, this was a bigger part of his game early in his career when he was at Indiana. He ran around a lot, but what? He got injured, had the ACL injuries, the shoulder injuries, so he hasn't been running as much. So you gotta wonder on the scouting report for Washington State, how much was that a factor? Him running around, not much, but he's shown he can do it. And Peyton Henry tacks on the point after. Another lead change, and it's 28-24 Washington. And offense is just about keeping the defense off balance. Give them something they can't expect, right? And right there, you think it's going to be Cam Davis with the lead play, or maybe go to Roma Dunze. No, it's going to be the quarterback, Michael Penix, who has not done a ton of this this year. He runs it in for the touchdown. Well, tomorrow we have two men's basketball championship games. The Phil Knight legacy matchup between eighth-ranked Duke and number 24 Purdue is at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC from Portland. And the Phil Knight Invitational game features Iowa State coming off that huge upset against number one North Carolina. They'll be facing UConn at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN. Purdue, of course, uh, upset Gonzaga last night when we landed at the airport. There were fans uh, none too happy about that no. in Spokane. Oh, that's right. 28-24, a minute 40 to go. And the way this game is played out, Rock, that's a ton of time for more points to be scored. The way this game is playing out, it, the, the last team to have the ball is going to be the team that wins. The way this thing's going, back and forth, just fantastic. 9-2, and two, Washington. 7-4, Washington State duking it out in the Apple Cup. This is going to be a fair catch. And we go to the studio and Matt. All right, guys, good evening. Coming up with the Nissan Halftime Report, Caleb Williams was special in the game against Notre Dame. We'll have highlights that could he have potentially clinch the Heisman Trophy. Plus, Ohio State, they're going to need some help now to get the college football playoff. As for those rankings, Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway give you their new top six after another Saturday full of shakeups. We'll see you coming up at the half. All right, Matt, thanks a lot. We're also going to see your uh, new top six. I'm going to give my top six, and I'm just telling you right now, it's outside the box. And you may be shocked, you may be upset, but I'm going to explain why I have what I have. We'll uh, wait till the second half. We're going to need to catch our breath. Yeah, we, we got to build the anticipation, right? Yeah, and rest up. <laughs> the way this game is going. Nakia Watson on that last run, he gets five. Cam Ward getting heated up from behind, got hit but was able to get rid of it to Watson. After the catch, he's got at the 30-yard line. So a third down coming up as Washington will try to get off the field. And any good quarterback has got to have that sixth sense, right? You just feel the pressure. He didn't feel or he didn't see Braylon Trice coming from that left side, but he felt him. He got that ball out of his hand. Two hundred seventy one yards total offense for Washington State Cam Ward 174 passing couple of touchdowns. He has Stribling first down across the 40 to the 42. That was your classic RPO you read the defender came down the run hit the pass behind him going with tempo. They've got two timeouts left Watson in the flat. Strung out to the sideline. Great job defensively by Fabicki Lannon. There's a penalty marker. Might be a face mask. Well, Fabicki Lannon did a great job attacking and First making a play, but then got the face mask. Yep. Defense number 13. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. He didn't need to do that for it to be a good play. Yeah, he, he didn't. He was there. He's in good shape, and there's going to be a Tackle for loss, or maybe just a one-yard gain, and mm, given 15 yards and a new set of downs to this Washington State offense. Just a minute to go here. And remember, Dean Janikowski has already hit a 50-yard field goal tonight. Washington so State closer to his field goal range. Two timeouts for Washington State. Still plenty of time. Ward shovel pass <laughs> caught. Anderson Grover. 
sophomore receiver coming back to make that catch at the 37-yard line. 40 seconds to go in the half. Ward all kinds of time. Scrambling around, throws to the sideline. It's going to be incomplete. So third down and four with a half minute to go. See what Cam Ward, as we mentioned earlier, he, he's not looking to take off when, when the pocket breaks down. He's looking to extend. It was just a good job of Washington in their secondary locking down his wide receivers. Nakia Watson back in the backfield. They'll give it to him. Watson, strong run after contact. And he may have it. And another marker flies. There's the penalty marker at the 27-yard line. Keen Watson running tough right now. And he's a wow. strong runner. And he's got that size, 223 pounds. I'd like to see him when he's completely healthy. It looked like it might have been some retaliation by Washington here defensively. I think it was Alex Cook, my the result throw a punch. of the play is a first down. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary rough there. Defense number five. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Second personal foul on this drive against Washington, and now you've got Wazoo in the red zone. And here it is. You see Alex Cook. He's a six year player. He, he's got to know better than that. I know he gets a little bit of the shove, but it happens right there in front of the, the official. Costly penalty. Washington State took the lead in the first quarter on a field goal. It's been touchdowns back and forth ever since. Washington State driving, trying to take the lead before halftime. 25 seconds on the clock. Ward getting pressure, going to the end zone, and it's going to be out of play. 19 seconds to go. It's a good job of bringing pressure by Washington. They brought the linebackers right up those a gaps right into the grill of cam ward and the defensive ends did a good job of setting an edge didn't allow any escape lanes there was nowhere for cameron ward to go to extend another long drive this is the ninth play for wazoo watson in the backfield Watson, big hole to run through. Stiff arm, breaks a tackle. Dives down to the seven yard line. Alex Cook finally got him down. That's a first down and a timeout called by Washington State. Spread the field and then hand it off to here. Workhorse running back with the power to stiff arm. And Tupatala, their best linebacker. Kia Watson finally getting going with that run game. We saw him how deadly he is in the pass game with that last touchdown. To 12 seconds. Cold night. You know, Thank you. Running downhill. Reminder, Pac-12 title game implications on the line here tonight. A Washington win, and Utah will face USC in the championship game. USC is, of course, in the title game. Washington State, if the Cougars are to win, it'll be Oregon going on to play the Trojans in Las Vegas. And Oregon with just that epic collapse tonight against Oregon State. But here we are, 12 seconds left, one timeout. I think they got a chance for two shots to the end zone here. Or maybe having to settle for the field goal. Ward sprinting out. First down and goal. Ward to the end zone incomplete. Intended for Stribling. What's the cliche, right? Always dangerous. Quarterback rolling out, thrown across his body. That's not usually when problems tend to happen there. Second down and goal. Another shot at the end zone, perhaps, before Absolutely. they try for the Absolutely. field goal? Absolutely, yeah. You got seven seconds left. You'll probably take a shot, get that clock, will be around three. Still plenty of time for the field goal. Washington will get the football to start the second half. One thing Cam Ward cannot do, he's so good at scrambling around, but he's only got seven seconds to work with here, so get the ball out of your hands. 
We do have one timeout remaining now. Penalty marker. This could be delay of game. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Does that change anything for you? I, I don't think much. I, again, I still think it's a, it's a shot to the end zone here. It, it, you could argue it may help, right? Give them a little more room, a little more field to work with. If they do have to attempt a field goal, the wind would be behind Janikowski. Ward to the corner for Ali. Incomplete with three seconds on the clock, I believe. Jordan Perryman in the coverage. And trying to throw it up to Ali, six foot three, and just a good job by Jordan Perriman. He's in phase. Forcing a bad throw. No catch. So here comes Dean Janikowski, who turned this place into a panic with that 50 yarder. That bounced off the crossbar in the first quarter. This will be a more modest 29 yard attempt just before half. So Washington State will settle for three on the final drive of the half. What a circus. 28-27 at the half. Seven lean changes. Penix throwing for two, ran for two more, and Ward throwing for two and running for another. Time now for the Nissan Halftime Report. Matt and the guys in the studio. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Geico. What a first half in Pullman, Washington. Apple Cup 114 has been dynamite. 28-27 at the half for 13 Washington leading Washington State. Let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to us by American Express and the two quarterbacks. The two transfer quarterbacks in their first year at their respective schools have put on an outstanding show. It's been a back and forth affair. It really is. Both of them were kind of a little bit slow to get going, but they've really settled in. Michael Penix has had a lot of time to throw. Cam Ward has just been Houdini back there, right? Scrambling, running around, extending plays. Both have been fantastic there in the first half. Seven lead changes in that first half. You get the feeling that whoever has the football last, or might I say whoever has the last bite at the apple, might win this one here tonight. Yeah, I mean, scoring on 9 of 11 uh, possessions in the first half, 630 combined yards. It's been a fun first half. It's been a lot of trick plays just to throw in the boot. This was early in the first half there. Washington State with the fake punt. Dayon Henley, the linebacker. And then for the second week in a row, a little trickeration throwback to Michael Penix with the cavalry out in front, blocking, taking it in for the touchdown. This first half has had just about everything. There's Kalen DeBoer. There were some issues getting the snap off in time in the first quarter, adjusting to the crowd noise, had to burn a couple of timeouts early, didn't really come back to haunt him in that first half. It did seem like Washington did make some adjustments to deal with that. Yeah, absolutely it did, because early on we're saying, w what's going on here? How come they can't get the playoff? It looked like they were struggling to get personnel on and off the field, but they settled down those last two or three drives and really looked in sync. Jake Dickert hoping his team can pull out another win in this Apple Cup rivalry. For the second straight year, it's going to be a touchback as Washington has the football to start at the 25. And Michael Penix, so good in that first half. 242 yards passing, a couple of touchdowns. Also ran for two. And, and just a good job here. Finally getting settled in. He's been helped out by his wide receivers, and they've been fantastic tonight. But you see the time he's had to throw. Getting Roma Dunze involved. And then again, something he hasn't done a ton of this year, running the football. But whatever you got to do is pull out all the stops in this rivalry game. First career game with multiple rushing touchdowns. Goes back to his days at Indiana. Here we go, first play. The second half, he wants a deep shot again, and he's got McMillan. Jalen McMillan, goodbye, touchdown. Are you kidding? 75 yards on the first play from scrimmage.
Wow. So we thought that first half was exciting. What a way to start the second half. And it's just a shot, and again, same thing. Time back there for Michael Penix. We talked about that cannon he has attached to his left shoulder. Just dropping an absolute dime to Jalen McMillan for the touchdown and just silencing this crowd. Henry's extra point is good. 10 seconds into the second half. And Jalen McMillan had a great first half, making some tough catches, the run after the catch. This is just a crossing round. Again, it had time to develop. The offensive line gave Penix time, but also allowed time for that route to develop. For McMillan to get from the left side of the field to the right, he was wide open for the touchdown. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Well, guys, 630 total offensive yards in that first half. You can imagine both coaches talked to me about their defenses needing to be better. For Washington State, Jake Dickert said his defense probably a little shell-shocked. Looks like that continued here in the second half. He said they have got to find a way, change some things to get pressure on Michael Penix Jr. You just saw all the time in the world for him to throw. Now, on the other side for Washington, Kalen DeBoer said his DBs have to plaster in coverage. It's opposite. They're getting to the quarterback. They just can't pull him down. And he said if they keep, can't keep letting those guys cut free because they know Ward can make a play there. Guys, I will tell you, though, both coaches very confident in their team's ability to handle the emotions that go with this rivalry. Kalen DeBoer said our team plays best under pressure in the second half of games like this. Kalen DeBoer and his staff have done a great job making adjustments at halftime as third quarter has been their best scoring quarter of the season. And Cam Ward, he has also had a great night in the first half. A couple of touchdown passes. He's closing in on 200 yards through the air. And he's also been good on his feet. Has a rushing touchdown tonight. And he hasn't had the benefit of the clean pocket like Michael Penning. So you saw in that play, just scrambling around, extending, buying time. Just hard for his DBs to cover for five and six seconds and then Late in the first half, got Nakia Watson leaking out of the backfield, got him involved. Watson ducking a tackle, but then he slammed down short of the 30-yard line by Tuputawa. Ball comes out, but Watson's going to be ruled down. And he's kind of slow to get up. We talked about Watson being dinged up here in recent weeks. He's been playing through some injuries. He has. It looks like a little... A little dinged up there. Coaches were talking about he wasn't going to be 100% for tonight, but it's a rivalry game. He's going to play. How about a substitute? Jalen Jenkins ripping off a first down run in front of the Washington State bench. Mishael Powell able to knock him out, but that's a gain of 19 for Jenkins. Yeah, Jenkins is a nice player, too. Dressed when he was Pac 12, player of the week for his performance against USC. Bringing some fresh legs. I'll tell you what, the thing for Cam Ward is, is as much as he's been scrambling around, he's taking care of the football. That's got to keep up here in the second half. Uh, Jenkins, nowhere to go, and swung down by Martin and Tuputawa. And when we talked to Chuck Morrell and William Inge, the co-defensive coordinators for Washington, they said Tuputawa needs to have a big night tonight. Yeah, he was going to be integral because, you know, they, they do so much. See those poolers? But, but... Tupatala does what any great linebacker does. He doesn't hesitate. Trusts his eyes and goes in and makes a play. And now Ward dumps it off to Stribling, and he's going to be hit by Hampton. And waits for the Calvary to arrive. And it's going to be third down and long here for Wazoo. That's a loss of two on the play. And you just wonder how long can... Cam Ward have to extend and create and face a lot of pressure while still taking care of the football again. That's what first seven games of the season, he had eight interceptions. The last four games, he's had none. That's got to keep up. But you know Washington was going to keep after him, try to force him into a bad throw. Yeah, this whole line has really been on its heels since the opening kickoff here tonight. Pressure. Third down and 20. Pressure off the edge. Ward escapes again. Still on his feet. 
But he runs out of time at the 36-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Even with the loss on the play, Ward still somehow manages to amaze me. And you breathe, the linebackers act like they're coming in the A-gaps, and then they fan out and just creating a cup. He's got a cup around that quarterback in the pocket back there. And then just the relentlessness of that D-line pulls him to the ground. That's, that's a great job. This is, is going to be the key to this second half for Washington. Can they keep Cam Ward from extending? Can they keep him in that net? They did that time. Just getting off, and it was Haberer. And the fair catch called for by Jalen McMillan. I'm so second field. sack of the night for the Washington defense. They get off the field. And Penix has the football back when we come back to Pullman. Back at the Apple Cup, you're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Washington cannot win the Pac-12. Still a possibility, though, for the New Year's Six. Certainly in play, a battle to get 10 wins for this Husky team tonight. Cameron Davis in the backfield, first down for the Huskies. They start this drive at the 26-yard line. Penix complete. McMillan, another big play. That is the 10th pass play tonight of 10 yards or more for Penix. And on that one, McMillan showed like he was going to go deep again, but then he just settled down, found, found a little hole in the middle of that zone there, sat down, snatched it, big play. That was a gain of 26. McMillan has 150 yards receiving on six catches. Penix to the outside for Davis. He's going to be upended short of the 40-yard line. Ball comes out. Wazoo says they have it. Yes, they do. First turnover of the game. And the Cougars have the football. That was Shaw Smith-Wade, the cornerback. We've talked about how great he's been in coverage tonight, and now making the defensive play of the game. I mean, Washington State was bleeding. They couldn't get a stop. It looks like they're going to come up with the forced fumble here. Well, no, it was actually it might have been Henley coming in late there. The Buckus finalist coming all the way from the middle of the field, that linebacker position, popping that ball in. out. You and I were just talking about how we hadn't really mentioned Henley's name much here tonight, if at all. And he may have come up with one of the biggest plays of the football game. Now let's see if the right arm, the right forearm was on the ground before that ball came out. We're going to take a look at this upstairs, no doubt. This is a huge review for Washington State. Potential momentum swinger. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's really hard to really tell. Really hard. Again, it was called a fumble on the field, so it has to be indisputable video evidence. From that angle, I did not see that. The Huskies have had only eight turnovers all year. That ranks sixth best in the FBS in fewest giveaways. Potentially one here in a situation where Washington had a chance to expand their lead, and we haven't had uh, much of that here tonight no. for these offenses. It's been back and forth. Washington scores, Wazoo answers, back and forth here. And Washington, they got the great they get the touchdown, first play of the second half. They get the big stop, and now they're going on drive. Let's see what the call is. After review, the ruling of a fumble recovered by the defense is confirmed. First down, Washington State. First turnover of the ball game. And Wazoo will take over at the 42-yard line. And, and that's exactly what Washington State needed. This crowd has been such a big part of this game was silence with that big opening first, second half play, that touchdown from Penix to McMillan. And now they finally get a reason to get back in this thing to see what Cam Ward can do. Off the turnover, Ward on first down goes to Farrell. That connection has been dynamic tonight. Farrell lunges close to the midfield line. And now Harriman 
hanging on to Farrell, and the crowd wanted a penalty flag. They don't get one. Going with some tempo now here, Eric Morris. Offensive coordinator, balls loose, and Ward is able to dive on it. Boy, the Cougars nearly gave it back. And, and that's the danger of, of going fast. Sometimes, you know, your own guys aren't ready. Quarterback's not ready to receive the ball. See, look, he's looking outside, trying to get things checked, and all of a sudden that ball is right on his chin. Fortunate they got it back. Remember how big turnovers were in last year's Apple Cup game? The Huskies turned it over four times, all on interceptions. Cougars get the first takeaway here tonight. Trying to capitalize on it, third down and five. I think we're going to continue to see Washington bring the pressure. Ward from a clean pocket goes deep. What a catch by Farrell. Robert Farrell climbing the ladder to haul that one in. That's a gain of 19. And there's a delayed blitz. Asa Turner, the safety, came on a delayed blitz. But just check out the textbook route running by Farrell. And then the small man at 5'8", getting real big and coming down with that ball. Three catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown for Farrell. Trying to bounce to the outside, Jenkins, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. Powell and Cam Bright combine on the stop, second down. And we have not seen Nakia Watson come back in the game since he went out a little bit nicked up earlier in this half. Crossing route for Billy Revere, the tight end. He is going to be close to the first down. Cougars hadn't used a tight end in 11 years. They went out and got Billy Revere out of the transfer portal from North Dakota. It's just his 11th catch of the year. But again, that's just another wrinkle of this air raid offense. They get a tight end. They get a quarterback who can run around and scramble. Just, just something to keep that defense guessing. Nakia Watson does come back in. And it's third down and short. We'll see if he gets it here. Nope, they're going to pass it. Screen pass to Smithson. First down. As he hurdles a man, gets inside the 15. Leighton Smithson keeping the drive alive. You were talking a second ago, partner, about tight ends. Watch the tight end, Cooper Mathers, on the outside throw this block. Bang! Knocking the DB, Jordan Perryman, on his rear. Picking up the first down. Nice play by Smithson. Hey, there's a sophomore out of Seattle. Revere, a sophomore out of Medina, Minnesota. They call him the Viking. Ward creating again with his feet. Going to catch up with him at the 11-yard line. Tuputala, another stop. And Ward continues to have to run for his life at times. Second down. He's running for his life, but I'll tell you what, he's not making it easy on this Washington defense. Now he steps into a throw. That's caught at the 10. Smithson again. So third down and medium here for Washington State. And I think this may be four down territory here. The Wazoo, they want to try to make this a manageable fourth down. Pick up some yards here. And slow. Substitution here for Washington. Second possession for the Cougars. They had to punt on their opening drive of the half. This is the ninth play of the series. Uh -oh. Penalty 12. flag. I don't think they got the guy off in time. Ward backpedaling, still looking downfield. He'll flip it short. It is caught by Victor, and he is slung out of bounds short of the line to gain. But I don't think Washington got their players off. No, they were caught with 12 late. I think it was Carson Green. The Defense, more than 11 players are on the field with the snap. That pin was close, half the distance to the goal. First down. Big break oh, for Washington oh, State. Huge. Huge. Not just the yards, but now. First down. Now they're not 
it said first down, but they're not changing the sticks here, so. Now they're calling third down. Hmm. It's half the distance, third down and one. They're gonna run it here with Watson. He got a touchdown. Well, they take advantage of the penalty, and they stick it in there with Watson, and now we'll see if they decide to go for two. Just a great job again. Washington, Washington State's offense, air raid, not known for running the ball, certainly not power runs, but big Nakia Watson just running downhill, finding a little crease and punching it in. They're gonna go for two. They're gonna send three receivers to the field, one to the boundary. That Robert Farrell in that trips formation at the top of the screen. I'd try to find where he's at if I were Washington. Ward spins away. It's a race to the corner. He got there. Two point, no he didn't. They're gonna say he was out. The, the ball was in his left hand. I think if he has the ball in his right hand, it's able to cross the pylon. Ward is arguing his case. Here's another look as we go to break. You can see he gets shoved out, and that ball is, does not get inside the pylon. If it's in his right arm, it does. And Washington comes up with a break right there, stopping this two-point conversion. There's Matthew Richards, our lead official here tonight. He just came away from the review monitor, and they looked at it again. No doubt about it, it was a two-point mistake for Cam Ward. And, and just a fantastic effort. I mean, how does he not go down? But then, look, ball's in his right hand, but then he feels Jeremiah Martin coming, puts the ball on his left, but he's able to put it back in his right hand. It, I mean, that's, that's a tough duty because he wants to keep that ball away from the defender so it can't get punched out. But had he gotten his right hand, could have snuck it around that pylon, but nevertheless failed two-point conversion. And that's big, right? In a game that's just been back and forth, back and forth. It's huge. That could loom large. So Cameron Ward has done so many things well here tonight. 247 passing, couple touchdown throws. He's run for a touchdown. But it stays a two-point game in favor of Washington, ready to go back on offense. Let's go down to Don. Yeah, Clay, Cam Ward clearly frustrated with himself down here, just keeps shaking his head, was looking up at the replay on the Jumbotron over and over, continued to shake his head, but about a dozen teammates came over to him, slapped him on the back, said, you got it. He just shook his head. Sophomore out of West Columbia, Texas. God, he's been fun to watch here tonight. I'll, I'll tell you what, and Coach Dicker talked about this week about he, he, He's young, right? He's just a sophomore, just his third year of playing college football. I think he's really come a long way tonight. He's growing up before our eyes here. We've seen Penix take deep strikes on first down a lot tonight. They go to the air, a little shorter throw for Jalen Polk, hauled in for a gain of seven. I can't say enough about the job Ryan Grubb has done tonight. The offensive coordinator has called a really good game for Washington. He has. They, they've been balanced, right? They've mixed in some runs thrown in a, a trick play to keep the defense off balance. He's been great. And you see a lot of this, too. Lots of shifting motion, keeping that defense guessing. And now they mix it up with the run. And it's going to be a first down carry, too. Talapapa, grand transfer out of Honolulu. Ryan Grubb. He's been with Kalen DeBoer since 2007 at the University of Sioux Falls. And the combination of Grubb and Penix have made a huge difference for this offense, especially in the passing game this year. Absolutely. I mean, you bring in Penix with his experience, and Ryan Grubb talked about Michael Penix's commitment to getting better, getting better at quick decisions making. We're seeing it. Tyler Papa couldn't reel it in. Incomplete on first down. 
Well, next Sunday, we're going to have the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups in the Fiesta and Peach Bowls to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the guys will also unveil the New Year's Six Bowl games and have the final top 25 rankings in this four-hour special. Starts noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific after Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN. And again, Washington still an outside chance they could end up in a New Year's Six. Yeah, especially I think if you're them, you're wanting USC to make it into that playoff. That'll leave a spot open. Play action. The tight end, Westover. Going to be cut down at the 40-yard line by Malinoa. Good play by the middle linebacker. It's a gain of two. Third down and fairly long. Great job by Malinoa. We've talked a lot about Dayon Henley, the linebacker, but... Watch 51, read it, and just fly. Lots of speed, not a ton of size, but a lot of speed Official on this Washington State out defense out coming up big. Player. Number 37 must leave the game from one down. Uh, Westover shaking up a little bit on the play. Former walk-on. Little woozy coming over to the sideline. I'm not sure he didn't get hit in the head here. They might take a look at this. Call down from the booth. Let's watch. Mm, that, that fits it, right? Forcible contact. Now, That's the only case we made is I mean, Westover was a runner at that point. He was not defenseless. Sam Lockett, the free safety. He doesn't know it, but he wants Washington to snap this fast. Third down and eight. Pressure. Stepping up, Penix uncorks one to Adunze. Another big play down the field to his wideouts. In a game where Michael Penix has had a ton of great plays, this may be his best one. This is the first time he's really been uncomfortable. Washington State brings a ton of pressure, just calmly steps up in the pocket and finds Adunze. That was excellent. Washington State sold out on it. They knew they had to stop. Michael Penix on that third down, they weren't able to do it. Big conversion, a gain of 23 in this Washington State front, still struggling to get to Penix. They haven't touched him tonight. That one's incomplete. Culp ends, ends up down on the turf, a little contact, but no penalty flow. Dunze and McMillan, what a combo in the wide receiving core for Washington, and they have both gone well over 100 yards receiving tonight. It's just, again, all, all three pieces coming together. Offensive line, the experience they have, a great quarterback talent, Michael Penix, and then weapons to the tune of McMillan and Dunze. That makes for what you're seeing, the number one pass offense in college football. Back to the ground in the Virginia transfer, Talapapa. So here we go, another third down. And about three, and they are seven for eight tonight, converting on third down. Washington State last third down brought pressure. They weren't able to get to Michael Penix, but they got to make him uncomfortable. I think they're going to bring it again right here. Fake. They pulled it off beautifully. Penix fake like he was walking to the sideline. Direct snap to Tawapapa, and it's a big run. Washington State's defense was not ready. They're looking to the sideline to get the call or see what's going on. Just, just forward again. Ryan Grubb with some more magic. Come up with just a little nuance right there to keep that defense off balance, and it's a first down, just like that. Washington leading by a couple. They have won 10 of the last 12 Apple Cups. Suffered a 27-point beatdown last year in Seattle. They want to make amends tonight. Play clock winding down, just got it off. Penix, plenty of time, rolling out. Fires, and it is intercepted. Picked off in the end zone. Derek Langford, second interception in two weeks. And this is what Washington State needed to do. They needed to be able to affect Michael Penix without having to blitz. you got to keep some defenders back there. You can't just send the house there because Penix will pick you apart. They got some pressure, forced him outside the pocket, and they finally forced a bad throw 
And now Washington State gets the ball back. Clay Mantic, Rocky Boyman, Don Davenport back here. Apple Cup, third quarter, 35-33 Washington. But they have just turned it over for the second straight possession. Had eight turnovers all year. Two tonight on back-to-back -back possessions. And, and that's amazing how, how well they've taken care of the football. But, I mean, that's twice. I mean, this Washington State defense has not been able to stop this Washington offense and get off the field. But come up with two turnovers is big. Here's Cam Ward now for Wazoo, rolling up. He's going to play it safe. Let's pick up a handful. Doesn't take a bump that time from Latuli Nasidnoa, who angled him out. Well, the Big 12 championship is set. TCU and Kansas State. It'll be Clemson and North Carolina in the ACC championship next Saturday at 8 Eastern. TCU, of course... Winning today over Iowa State, they're number four right now. They're likely to go up. We'll see. And what a job TCU's done this year. Putting the exclamation point on today over Iowa State. They go to 12 and 0. Now, Latuli Nasano, who we just talked about out of Concord, California, is down. We haven't seen a lot of guys nicked up here tonight, fortunately. It's been a physical, emotional game, though, for sure, as these Apple Cup matchups always are. Yeah, it certainly is. It's been a little chippy at times, too, right? Some, yeah. Some bad blood, some push from the show. That's all right. That's what a rivalry game's all about. Jake Dickert, the head coach for Washington State. Over there talking with his team. All right, Rocky rates the rankings. All right, here we go. So look at this, and I know everyone, wait a minute, what do you mean? Michigan jumps Georgia? Let me explain. In my opinion, that win over Ohio State today, okay? 22-point win at Ohio State, who was just throttling opponents. That's the best win in college football, okay? Now, is it likely to jump Georgia? Is the committee going to look at it that way? But no, but this is my explanation of it. I think that's the best win of the year. They also have a win over then number 10 Penn State, which they blew out. Penn State team that's 10 and 2. So I think you're talking best wins. I think Michigan has the advantage over Georgia because of how Oregon has performed here lately. Third and three. Ward trying to pick it up on his feet. He's not going to get there. Tupu Tala tracks him down and it's going to be fourth down. I don't have an argument with your rankings. I really don't. I it's interesting, though, you got Alabama there at six. If that's the case, they've still got a chance. I know. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> People will go crazy. But, but again, I, I think Oregon losing that game, especially in the fashion they did, yeah. I, that was, in my opinion, that was considered one of Georgia's best wins. They beat them 49-3 to first game of the season. Now, all of a sudden, that win doesn't look near as good. So Washington ready to get it back. Haberer, a little rugby-style kick. McMillan calling for the fair catch. And Washington dodges a bullet. Washington State scored a touchdown on the last turnover. They don't get any points on that last Washington giveaway. Let's go down to Dawn and see what she thinks. Of the yeah, Rockets. Rocky, I got to disagree with you on that switch at one and two. Georgia has dominated everyone this year. They stay in the one spot. Michigan in the two. We're, we're the same four there. But my first two out, I actually have Tennessee in that sixth spot. I don't know if you guys noticed, but South Carolina beats Clemson today. Maybe that Tennessee loss to South Carolina, not quite as terrible as it initially looked. Shane Beamer has a rolling over there at South Carolina. Yeah, right. So uh, I, I put Tennessee in there just because of what they've been able to do. And then today, a statement win for them. I know it's Vanderbilt, but Vanderbilt has two SEC wins. Incomplete intended for Culp on first down. I, I, I just can't get that image of Tennessee getting absolutely demolished by South Carolina two weeks ago. Was it 68 I, points they put on them? Ooh, that's tough. I know, a South Carolina team that just took care of Clemson today. Uh, but. Yeah, Shane Beamer. He's uh, very emotional after that victory today. I think he took a shot at Jesse Palmer, too. Did you hear that? He did. <laughs> well, after the champ. Jesse's back in the studio tonight. <laughs> Second down and 10. Penix sliding up. Spins away, being chased. Passes short. 
looked like Cameron Ward a little bit. That's what he's been doing all night. Not quite as nimble, but I'll tell you what. Washington State, we, we talked about. Brian Ward, number one priority. We got to make Michael Penix be uncomfortable. We can't allow him to play seven on seven. Last couple drives, they've been able to affect him. That's another good job. These defenses starting to bow their necks. Can Washington State make a stop here? Third down and 10. Final minute of the third quarter. And there's no red jersey past about three yards right now. Pressure, Penix sidesteps a tackle, and it's incomplete. That flag comes in. Derek Langford. Did he interfere with Jalen Polk? The initial indication is yes. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. Man. Automatic first down. I didn't think he did. I gotta be honest with you, I didn't think he did. Yeah. Need to see it again. Yeah, we'll, we'll see it again here. I don't know. I'd choose to let him play on that one. I mean, he's going up. He's making wow. a play on the ball. His eyes are on the ball. That's I, not a penalty. I, I don't agree with that penalty at all. That is not, not a penalty. Langford played that clean. I don't know how much more you can ask of that DB covering a great wide receiver like that. Deep handoff to Davis, and just like that, Washington now into plus territory. He rips off 11. And this crowd is not happy. They are teed off. Yeah, that was a huge opportunity to get the ball back here, force a punt. They sell out, bring the pressure, and force Panks to chuck it up. And I thought it was good coverage, and this crowd agrees. Washington over 500 yards total now tonight. 381 through the air. Penix has three touchdown passes. But he was picked off on the last series. They turned it over on the last two. And Washington will have a two-point lead quarter. going to the fourth quarter in the 2022 Apple Cup. Pac-12 after dark. <laughs> An absolute beauty on the Palouse tonight. The ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Geico. The Apple Cup going to the fourth quarter. Two-point game. Washington has the lead and the ball. Washington State's defense outstanding all season. Tonight, though, not getting pressure. Not, but they do have two takeaways. That's, That's right. been huge. The interception. And then the force fumble. So uh, that'll always trump TFLs with sacks. But they would love to, again, continue to make Michael Penix uncomfortable back there. Can Washington State come back and beat the Huskies for their second straight year? Penix down the middle of the field looking for Polk. He's got it. Caught it at the five-yard line. He was bracketed deep in the secondary, but made the catch. It's a 41-yard pickup. This offensive line has just been incredible all season. Washington State brings pressure. It's picked up. Michael Penix has both time and space to deliver an absolute beauty. Remember the big play to start the second half, the third quarter? Well, Penix has done it to start the fourth quarter. A deep shot down the field. And it's Jalen Polk who already has a touchdown in this game. Nearly got into the end zone again. And, and everybody getting in on it, right? The offensive line, the tight end. Saw Cam Davis, the running back in blitz pick up there. Just created a nice pocket for Michael Penix. I mean, just what a luxury. Have that time and space and then just delivers a dime. Ryan Grubb has orchestrated 549 yards of total offense. Penix over 400 yards. He threw for over 400 at Oregon two weeks ago. Of course, that big upset of the Ducks. He has put together a great night here tonight. Now, can he and the Huskies finish it? That's what it's going to have to be here. Got to capitalize here. Remember their two previous drive in, drive in and turnover. Right now, they're knocking on the door. Got to find a way to get this thing in for a touchdown. They can go up two scores. That was the 12th play tonight of 10 yards or more. Penix goes under center. Little end around. A Dunze going in. Touchdown. Another wrinkle from Ryan Grubb. I, I, I 
could not be more impressed with Ryan Grubb as a play caller tonight. We've seen everything. We've seen down the field shots, we've seen runs, we've seen trick plays, and now the tempo, quick get up to the line and get the jet sweep to your best offensive weapon before the defense can get its cleats in the ground. Just excellent. Oh, that's off the upright. Of course, Peyton Henry misses the extra point. Of all people, the guy who has been so clutch this year now. Let's see if it comes back to hunt Washington. And this was all set up by them getting the line of scrimmage quick, by getting in the hands of a Dunze. This game coming down to the wire. Washington trying to put it away. The lead goes to eight for Washington. Still a one possession game, though, because of the missed extra point. Roma Dunze with the touchdown. He remembers last year in Seattle when the Cougs won it and they planted the flag right at the middle of the field at Husky Stadium. And these guys have been salty for 12 months looking for payback. That stings. That is the ultimate sign of disrespect, planting the flag at the 50 yard line. And Don reported it before the game. That really stuck in the crawl of this Washington team. Fair catch, and the Cougars will have it at the 25. 14 and a half to go. Well, tomorrow we have two women's championship games for you on the court. The Phil Knight Legacy matchup. Number three, UConn. Number nine, Iowa. One Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on ABC. And the Phil Knight Invitational, North Carolina, Iowa State, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN2. Caitlin Clark of Iowa putting together a great year. The Hawkeyes, triple threat. Terrific numbers for her. All right, I'll, I'll tell you what this game is going to come down, going to come down to. You ready? So right now, Washington has been after. They've been harassing Cam Ward all night. He's been fantastic, extending, creating. But do they find a way to force him into a bad throw? That's going to be a deciding factor in this game. He's complete on first down there to Smithson. And like you said, I, Washington State hasn't turned the ball over yet tonight. Yeah, again, first seven games of the season, he has eight interceptions. Last four, he's had none, including tonight. Flea flicker. Ward rolling out, being chased by Martin. Gets away, and he's going to be close to the first down. Did he get it? It's going to depend on the spot, but... Same, Again. same thing, the ball's in his right hand. If it's in his left hand, it gets across. He's gonna be short, I think. I think you're right. This is the same thing that happened on a two-point play. The ball's in the other hand, it's just a little bit more room for him to get across that, that line. So now third and one, Washington, can they make a stop? Wow. Well, that's gonna be a first down. Boy, Nakia Watson, another hard, strong, physical run for the junior from Austin, Texas. So much respect for all these players. Just fighting, scratching, clawing. Look at Nakia Watson. He's limping around. He's banged up. But he's finding a way to help make some plays for his team. This is just fantastic. Last year, he sat behind Max Borgie and Deion McIntosh, getting his opportunity to shine this year. And boy, has it. They fake it to him. Ward will throw. Come back, catch Smithson. Boy, Smithson quietly putting together a really nice night. He's made some nice catches. It's a pickup of 10 and another first down for the Cougs. And, and this is just the most confident I've seen Cam Ward. I, again, I said it earlier, I think he's growing up before our eyes. Making a ton of plays in this game, despite the fact he's been harassed. Again, just continue to take care of the football, but Really impressed with how he's played tonight for a young guy. He's trying to lead a comeback. They're down eight. Play action pass. Ward backpedaling. He's going to take a deep shot. Way downfield. Contact. Here come the flags. Stripling was knocked down. And Dominique Hampton, number seven. I think he knows it. Yeah. And the difference between... Pass interference. Defense number seven, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the difference here is Dominique Hampton was not able to get his eyes to turn back around the ball. 
You see just a little bit of shove, pulling at the arms, and yeah, that, that's a penalty. That I agree with. Seventh penalty against Washington tonight. And Kalen DeBoer's team has not taken a lot of penalties this year. Been pretty good about it. Washington State would still love to get an explosive play here. First and ten. Incomplete. Again, intended for Stribling. No contact that time. Fabicki Lannon, the Husky backer, in on the coverage. 74 points combined here tonight. 83 is the record. That happened in 76. You think that gets topped here tonight? Uh, the way these offenses are performing, I do. Jake Dickert and Kalen DeBoer matching wits for the first time here tonight in the Pac-12. Cameron Ward diving ahead. And it's going to be third down and fairly long here for Washington State as Javon Parker, the defensive lineman, came over to knock down Ward. Gutsy play by Ward. You can see he's a little banged up. He's doing whatever he can to try to win this football game. I think this is four down territory. So if you're Washington State, you want to try to pick up at least half this yardage. Make for a short fourth down play if you have to. Robert Farrell's got a few catches tonight. All of them spectacular. He went in motion. Ward, the pocket collapses around him, and down he goes. Third sack tonight for this Husky defense. Parker getting home. And, and that's what he couldn't afford, to take a sack there. But, again, just great job of controlled rush by Washington's defense. You can't fly up the field and open up rush lanes for him to get through, but they're twisting guys, stunts. It just closes all the interior escape lanes. They have an edge to the defense and just swarm Cameron Ward and force the punt. Big time play by this Washington defense. And that secured the fact that they weren't going to be in field goal range for Janikowski. Haberer comes on to punt, trying to pin Washington deep, and they do. It's going to be a long field, Timeout on the field. for the Huskies. Nick Haberer leads the Pac-12 in hang time, leads the Pac-12 in punts put inside the 20, puts it inside the 5, that's a... ESPN College Football is presented by GEICO. Switch today and see all the ways you can save. Big stop by the Husky defense to get off the field, turn it back over to Penix in the offense, which has been excellent tonight. Yeah, this Washington offense and Ryan Grubb, who we just saw, has been fantastic. And to me, our offense is all about keeping a defense off balance. The defense wants to attack. They want to come downhill, and when you got a play going this way, and then it comes back across, and then a little trickeration looking to the sideline, you catch them sleeping, and then a little jet sweep to your best weapon. Just so many things that keeps this defense off balance. They can't screw their cleats in the ground and come attack. Worst field position of the night for the Huskies. Tawa Papa trying to give him some breathing room. We'll pick up just one. Penix has had a 400-yard game here tonight. It's his third of the year, which is tied for the most in the FBS. And, and I think if you're Washington and Michael Penix, yes, but you've lived on the explosive plays all year, but I think you'd like to chew a little clock here, too, if you can. Washington has won five straight, trying to make a case for a New Year's Six game if they get the opportunity, and they might. Washington State has brought some more blitzes these last couple drives. We'll see what they do here. From the end zone, Penix uncorks. Jalen Polk makes the catch about a yard shy of the line to gain. So third and one. It's a good job just leaving it all to your wide receiver. All right. Knowing that he's going to shield the defender and come up with a catch. You know, another thing too, Rocky, that I've been impressed with tonight is Penix's composure. Remember, this this offense turned it over on two possessions consecutively, including an interception thrown in the end zone by Penix. They rallied and got a touchdown on their next series. He did, and let's not forget, too, he started off this game kind of slow, wasn't really connecting, but he's stayed in there, stayed dialed in, and he's really paying off. 
Cameron Davis takes it right ahead. And did he get it? Ooh. It's going to depend on the spot. He got tripped up and his knees went to the ground. Did he get that ball across the... Yeah, they're going to say he did. First down. That's huge. Let that clock keep ticking away here. The leader's eight for Washington. Remember, uh, Peyton Henry missed an extra point on that last touchdown drive for the Huskies. Otherwise, it would be a two-possession game. There's Kalen DeBoer, 48-year-old first-year head coach, the pride of Millbank, South Dakota. Three receivers to the wide side of the field. They're going to run it. Davis finds a hole and finds the sideline. Big run for big Cam Davis. Just rumbling into the secondary. Lockett finally caught up with him, but it's a gain of 26. It's funny, you kind of saw the same thing in the Michigan-Ohio State game. This defense gets so enamored with stopping the wide receivers that you almost forget, hey, we, we, we got to stop the run here, too. That's a nice explosive run here for Washington. And now back to the air, out of the pocket. That's going to be incomplete. Intended for a Dunze. Going back to Cameron Davis, he does do something other than just score touchdowns. I mean, he's been a battering ram inside the 10-yard line this year. 13 rushing touchdowns. He's the kind of guy you want on your fantasy team. Absolutely. And I, I just think the one-two punch between Davis and Talapapa has been fantastic. Again, 22 combined touchdowns coming into this game. And give us in this offense some balance. Coming up on eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. What a game here in the Apple Cup. Screen, Talapapa behind a blocker two, and he's going to be close to another first down. Well, that was a well-executed play as well. And, and just, again, another great play call by Ryan Groh. Love the design. You know Washington State's defense is attacking. They want to come downhill. Okay, use that aggression against them and throw a little screen on them. Nice play. Talapapa will move the chains and into plus territory down at the 49. Over 600 yards of total offense now <laughs> after that play for Washington. Oh, I love it. And again, this is the number one defense in the Pac-12. Keeping teams under 20 points per game coming into the night. Oh, what an adjustment. Great catch, Devin Culp, the tight end. It's only a four-yard pickup, but a spectacular catch. And that came within a whisker of Jaden Hicks, the safety, picking that ball off. That was close, but again, just ball placement by Penix. Low and away from the defender, where only the wide receiver can get it. Washington always has great tight ends, it seems. Of course, Kate Otten last year. He's with the Huskies, now with Tampa Bay in the NFL. Under seven minutes to go. Cameron Davis on the right hip of Penix. Three receivers. They're going to go to Davis with the pass, and that's nearly picked off. Henley had his hands on it, the Nevada transfer and Butkus finalist. Well, kick off your Week 12 NFL Sunday with the countdown crew, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN. Joe Burrow sits down with Alex Smith, plus an all-access look into a mind-blowing team meeting with Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Third down and six. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Can Wazoo get the stop defensively they need here? They bring the pressure, picked up again. Wide open man, first down and more. That's Taj Davis. Out at about the 33-yard line. Big conversion again for Michael Penix, and no Cougars got within a whisker of him. And what they actually did is they showed pressure, but then dropped out of it, only brought four. So, look, you bring pressure on Penix, he completes it. You drop seven into coverage, he completes it. He's just phenomenal. Again, fifth-year quarterback playing his best football right now. 
quickly gets rid of that to Odunze, finds some wiggle room. He's got a first down, and he's out inside the five-yard line. What a great run after the catch for Roma Dunze. I mean, what a phenomenal play. I mean, the, the timing and the precision is just bang. Right now, look at the offensive line. We've talked about their pass blocking. Now they get out in front for Adunze on the screen. And nowhere to go that time for Will Nixon. His first touch here tonight. One of the reserve running backs, no gain. Second down and goal to go as Washington is looking for just a devastating score to Washington State's cause. Washington State has got to sell out right now and do everything possible to create a negative play, create a bad through throw. They cannot afford to allow Washington to score a touchdown here. Davis in the backfield, sprinting out across his body, Penix to the end zone. And McMillan wanted a penalty flag, none thrown. Sam Lockett in on the coverage, numeral zero. Trying to make a case to interfere with his progress here, but this drive's going on about seven minutes here for Washington. Chewing that clock here and knocking on the door. Penix calls the receivers in tight to the formation. Pressure now. Penix is just going to throw it away. Ron Stone Jr., great pressure that time on Penix, and it's going to be fourth down. There is a flag, and it's in the backfield. That might be a hold. Offense number 55. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a fourth down. So now Peyton Henry is going to march out. Try and make this an 11 point football game. Peyton Henry did miss that extra point on the touchdown drive earlier. But he has been clutch this year. Of course, game-winning field goals to beat Oregon State and Oregon this year. Sets up from 20 yards out. Just a chip shot for him. And the lefty bangs it home. Washington's all-time leading scorer. Makes it 44-33 with just over five minutes to go. Peyton Henry and the Huskies have the lead. Just a soul-sucking drive if you're a Washington State fan as Washington only gets three, but they make it a two-score game on the field goal by Peyton Henry. What a game for Penix. 485 yards through the air. He's got some rushing. Production to a couple of touchdowns there. Five total touchdowns tonight for Michael Penix Jr. Went 12 and 5 as the starter at Indiana the last four years. That's where he met Kalen DeBoer for the first time. And, and I mean, what a magical combination that's turned out to be. Met him all those years ago. Now he comes here and is having absolutely the best year of his football life. Lincoln Victor gets it out across the 25 yard line. Coming up next, it's Sports Center from Los Angeles with Stan and Ashley. It wasn't close in Columbus. Wolverines win big, full highlights ahead. Plus, Heather Dinich and Kirk Herbstreit weigh in on Saturday's playoff implications and which players may be stuck on the sidelines on NFL Sunday. Sports Center from LA next on ESPN. Clay Matvick, Rocky Boyman, Don Davenport, the 114th Apple Cup in Pullman has been outstanding. Stribbling on the catch, quickly wrapped up at about the 33-yard line. Now, both teams have three timeouts remaining, but we are under five minutes to go. And Washington's defense has come up big here these last couple drives. Got to find a way to shut Cam Ward down. Wazoo down two scores. Ward spins out of a tackle. And that throw is low, intended for Watson. And it's incomplete. 
Third and four. In Washington, they haven't, really, they haven't been able to sack Cam Ward, but they've, they've harassed him all night. And this is with just rushing three. I mean, a great job there by Braylon Trice. You know, that, that, that's the toughest job in football right there. Rushing the five-man offensive line with just three. He found a way to still get home. Cameron Ward just a sophomore, so he'll be back next year Ooh. for Wazoo. That's a hard hit on Nakia Watson, who has taken a pounding, not just tonight, but all season. But he keeps it on ticking. And it's going to be fourth down and about three. We've got to go for it here. Flag. Did we get a false start? Play a game. Defense. Using signals causing the offense to react. Five-yard penalty will result in a first down by yardage. Oh, Kalen DeBoer is losing his mind on the sideline. Can't believe that that was called. <laughs> and what a huge break for Washington State. I was just getting ready to say, on the play of the game, fourth down, you go tempo, and, you know, and that causes you to jump off sides. But I guess they're going to say Washington's defense was clapping up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's what they said. Insinuating the snap count. That's a break. Ward. Complete, and that's going to be a first down for Stribling. Now the number one receiver out of Hawaii with a big play, 17 yards into plus territory. Clock will start on the snap. Well, ball came out. Jeremiah Martin knocked it loose. Cam Ward was able to recover, but that was nearly a game-ending turnover. Jeremiah Martin, he's come up big here the last couple plays. He's sticking that right hand there and knocking it down. That's what we talked about. Final way to force a turnover for Washington State. Wazoo hasn't turned it over tonight. Nearly did there, and now no place to go with it. So Ward just heaves it out of bounds. Browning. Parker and Trice all over Cam Ward that time. So now third down and 19. Time running out for Jake Dickert and the Washington State Cougars. I don't anticipate Washington bringing pressure here. I think we'll just rush four, drop everyone else in the covers, maybe just rush three. Three receivers to the right, one to the near side. Leaking out of the backfield, Watson. He's going to be slammed down at the 46 by Alex Cook. And so now fourth down. This could be it for Washington State. This is it right here. Pressure coming off the edge. Ward escapes again. Buying time. Goes all the way across the field for Farrell. Almost got loose, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's it. Alex Cook doesn't let him get any further, and Washington State is going to turn it over on downs with 2.25 to go in the Apple Cup. Washington by 11. Kalen DeBoer has been the toast of Seattle this year. 225 away from his first Apple Cup victory. It would be a sixth straight win for Washington and 10th this season. Can you imagine that? Four and eight last year. Head coach gets fired. Kalen DeBoer comes in, brings Michael Panix in, and you're on your way to turning it around and winning 10 games. Good first down run for Talapapa. And there's the first timeout called. Timeout. Washington, Washington State. State. Their first of the half. Well, a Washington win time. tonight. And that means Utah will take on USC in the championship game in Las Vegas next week to decide the Pac-12 title. Oregon uh, hoping for a miraculous comeback here in the final minutes. 
for Washington State. What a matchup that first Utah-USC game yeah, it was. was. Terrific. Gave U USC a loss. Overtime. You talked about Ryan Grubb, the offensive coordinator tonight. For Washington, such a great job calling plays, especially on first down. On first down tonight, 34 plays, over 440 yards of offense on first down alone for Washington. Wow, amazing. First down, spinning inside the 40, Talapapa. And he's got 86 yards tonight on 12 carries. The offensive line opening up another big hole. Look at that, they protected Michael Penix well all night. As much as Washington State tried to bring pressure, tried to get him off the spot, weren't really able to do it. And then in the run game, the under talked about part of this offense. Again, that offensive line just, just really doing the job. So much experience up there, and it's really, really helped out and come into play. Jake Dickert deciding not to call a timeout. And Talapapa, look out, there he goes. Wayne Talapapa with the exclamation point. And he took his time doing it. Might say he was planting his own flag right there. <laughs> now he's gonna say he was just trying to waste some more time off the clock, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe a little uh, gamesmanship there. You know, look, Washington State selling out, bringing everybody, trying to create a negative play, make something happen so there's nobody at the second level and Tyler Papa takes advantage. He goes over 100 yards rushing. And Washington over 700 yards of offense tonight. That extra point is good. And Washington makes it 51-33 with a minute 28 to go as they have just landed the haymaker here in the Apple Cup. Yeah, and, and this offensive line is just, they deserve to, for America to see their faces the way they've played, not just this year, but especially tonight. You know, a big part of talk about this offense and they don't don't turn the ball over how explosive they've been. Those five big boys right there, a big reason why. Luciano, the center, a converted tight end. He has turned into an excellent center the last couple of years. Kirkland, a sixth year senior. Yeah, no sacks allowed tonight, only seven all season. Amazing. I mean, I mean, think about that. Uh, and, and Michael Penix has only been sacked five times. <laughs> I mean, just such a luxury. I mean, you can, Ryan Grubb can draw up all the great offensive plays we've seen all night and all these great schemes, but it does absolutely no good if you don't have the time for your quarterback to make something happen, okay? It doesn't matter, but the way this offensive line's played has allowed him to do all these fun things offensively. Lincoln Victor, last gasp here for Washington State. He's going to be stopped short of the 25-yard line. Well, another reminder, next Sunday, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups for the Fiesta and Peach Bowls to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. Reese and the guys will unveil the New Year's Six Bowl games as well. That'll be the final top 25 rankings in this four-hour special. It all starts at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Sunday, right after Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN. There's another rankings reveal on Tuesday this week on ESPN, but that big one for the playoff is a week from tomorrow after all the conference championships. The final one. Cam Ward has had a great night, but Washington State will come up empty. As far as a win tonight, they're not going to retain the Apple Cup, but Cameron Ward, you, you've got to respect his effort. Almost 300 yards passing. He has uh, avoided the rush all night. And, and even in a loss, I think this, you can make an argument, this is his best game. You know, especially with the way this 
Washington defense was getting after him. He found a way to extend and keep plays alive, deliver a few explosive plays. He was great in the run game as well. Really impressed with him. The future is very bright for both Cameron Ward and this Washington State offense. Again, avoids the set. Watson dodges a tackle, will get across the 45 yard line. Once again, a 15 on that play and a timeout. Don't forget, coming up, Sports Center and a recap. The final day of the regular season in college football, the conference championships coming up next weekend, including in the Pac 12, where it'll be USC and Utah. And you're going to need to check in to catch all the craziness that happened today, right? Michigan's big win. Clemson loses. And TCU just puts it on Iowa State. I mean, just a fantastic game for these Husky players. How about the guys for Ten Washington wins. who were on this team last year felt that embarrassing loss, 27 points, the largest margin of defeat for Washington in this series with Washington State. They wanted payback tonight, or, and they got it. They got it. They did. Ford's going to get to the sideline. Michael Penix. Washington fans hope he comes back for another year in 2023. What do you think the likelihood that uh, Kalen DeBoer can get him back? I, I think it's... You know what? I mean, he's had a fantastic year. So on one hand, you say, okay, he maybe tries to go in the NFL, but I think his injury history, right, is going to hurt him a little bit. I think he needs to, you know, show he can be healthy for a couple seasons in a row. Oh, they finally get to Ward. It took a while, but they finally get to him. Tupuala Fatui. And the last time out for Washington State is called with 31 seconds. I don't think they sacked him in the fourth quarter. That's the first one. And was this a little flag wave? Is that what that was? Yeah, I think, I think so. it is. <laughs> Planned it. You tell me these rivalry games don't mean anything to these players. Yes, they do. Kalen DeBoer right in motion on that sideline. He has been the uh, schooled up by the fans, the alumni, Chris Peterson yep. telling him, you know, the history of this rivalry. Chris Peterson never lost an Apple Cup while he was the coach at Washington. He didn't, and, and this week, Kalen DeBoer brought in some, some other coaches, right? Chris Peterson and others to talk about the significance of this game. And I think that really helped out, set the tone. It's caught by Victor at the 50-yard line. And it'll be fourth down, they hurry up to the line. Jake Dickert won this game last year. It's not going to happen this time. Pressure off the edge. And Ward is going to be swung down by Jeremiah Martin. And now there's some pushing and shoving. Here come the penalty flags. Ward sacked for the sixth time in this game. And that's going to do it, but not before we get some penalties. Result of the play is a turnover on down. It'll be Washington's ball, first and ten. After the play, personal play, unnecessary roughness. Okay. He won. Zero. Fifteen-yard penalty, first down. <laughs> it's, it's late, I don't know. <laughs> You want to know where the Apple Cup is? It's inside that case, that silver case. Oh, wow, look at that. And it's ready to make a trip back to Seattle. What a great game, right? I mean, just back and forth. I mean, there were seven lead changes in the first half alone. Over oh, 1,100 that. yards of total offense in this game. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. 84 points, the most ever in Apple Cup history. You know, we thought, you know, weather might be a factor in this game. 
you know, keeping the score down. It actually <laughs> turned out to be the reverse once these guys got warmed up. And it did on the first couple possessions. And I think these players just settled in and said, look, we got to cut this thing loose and let it rip if we want to win. Both teams did it, but Washington comes out victorious. Michael Penix. In what has been a great year for quarterbacks in the Pac-12 has made his case for the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, you've, you've, you've got Bo Nix, right. you've got Daniels, you've got Caleb Williams. Well, Caleb Williams, you've got yeah. those quarterbacks in this league, but Penix, outstanding this Phenomenal. year. That does it. Washington wins the Apple Cup. The first for Kalen DeBoer as head coach. And what a night for his fifth year junior quarterback, Michael Penix. 51 33 the final. Your final thoughts, Rock? I'll, I'll tell you what, again, a rivalry game that lived up to all the hype. Both teams came in and wanted this game bad, but I think Washington was just too explosive. Michael Penix in the career revival he had, amazing. For Rocky Boyman and Don Davenport, I'm Clay Matfix. So long from Pullman. We now send you to Sports Center.